Qualifications? Rape, murder, arson, and rape. You said rape twice. I like rape. Charming. I am offended. You in full retard, man. Never go full retard. Are you okay? Is anybody offended? Are you offended? We'll give some land to the niggers and the chinks, but we don't want the Irish. I'm shocked and, and offended and hurt, man. That is pretty. I like that. You have offended my family, and you have offended the Shaolin Temple. Hey, hey, look at us go. Welcome to Movie Bars. Hi, everyone. That is the most excited you're going to hear us <laughs> pretty much all episode. Yeah, we're going to try to be excited and make it fun, but it is kind of an unfun topic, so bear with us. <laughs> I'm just going to say this at the top, Jake. Okay. And, and then we'll do our... Our housekeeping. Yeah. This episode bit us in the ass. Yeah? Yes. For the first time ever, we were a week away from recording it, and we had been preparing for, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks. And we were both kind of thinking the same thing, and you texted me, you're like, how's it going? And I'm like, it's <laughs> not going great. And you're like, what if we didn't do this or we changed the plan entirely? <laughs> I was like, I love that idea. Let's completely yes. do that because this is not a good idea. This was, wow. Uh, don't worry, folks. We'll get into it. If anything, you can laugh at our misery. Yeah, I think it's going to be good overall. I do. Th I, I like I really our do. plan. I think we salvaged it, like you were saying before we started. Yeah, but uh, it is going to be a wild ride because we have a lot to tell you about. It's a, lot a rough of one, things. folks. <laughs> Uh, so, before we get into it, though, what the fun what, stuff? What beer are you drinking today? All right, so <laughs> I've never tried it before. You know, I'm a big fan of ambers and reds mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, so, this is a new one from a brewery in Dallas called Pegasus City. Okay. It is a cannoneer, it is bold amber. Oh, okay. It's, it's not bad. It okay. ain't bad. It ain't bad. Wow. I need it. Oh, I didn't yeah. care to even try to find a beer related. I was like, you know what? I need yeah. a beer. I know I will just enjoy that can wash <laughs> the taste of this bullshit out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, you also probably subconsciously knew that you could not get one more perfect than me because I did get a themed beer for today. Okay. It is it is from the Duck Ducklaw Brewing Company in Baltimore, Maryland. I don't know that I've had a Maryland beer before, besides like Sam Adams, obviously. Mm -hmm. If they're even still made there, I don't know. Don't at me. Um, but this one is called Mad Bishop. And as we all know, maybe the kids these days don't know, because I think that it's kind of tapered off. When you think of offended people, you uh, think of like- When you think of what? Offended people. Yeah. You think of like, blue haired woke people nowadays you don't think so much about like religious groups but throughout history religious groups have gotten pretty upset about stuff so yeah yeah this is mad like crazy but it works mad like actually no like that, that that works really well considering like bishops are a part of like yeah certain denominations that really got mad <laughs> about one of the movies that we watched this week yeah uh, it's an uh, october fest uh ale i guess Cool. And it's uh, very good, actually. So nice. it is also a good one to wash down the nice. bullshit, as you said. Look, look at us drinking happy beer. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Jake, you watch anything new this week or before <laughs> recording this week? I did, but all of them were the things in this episode that I didn't want to watch. So <laughs> I no, know. not really. <laughs> uh, I saw you? Black Adam. How'd that go? You know what? Is it the perfect uh, comic book movie? No. Is it entertaining as hell? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was cool. It was Good. fun. Uh, and obviously, if, unless you've been under a rock. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, then, obviously, the best part is our guy is back officially. Yeah. Like, yeah. <sighs> I loved Henry Cavill's, like, Henry Cavill's Instagram yep. posts and stuff. He's very excited to be back. And yes. so I'm glad to have him back. And it was really cool. I watched a lot of like uh, 
fan reaction, his interview shortly after that, I kind of felt bad for him because he's trying to do press for Enola Holmes too, and yeah. everyone's like, who fucking cares? <laughs> right. You're Superman. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad for him at that, but I was like, I had a thought, and my daughter and I were actually talking about this, of like just the overwhelming yeah. amount of support for him to be donning the cape again. Mm-hmm. And I told my daughter and I were talking about just like, what that must feel like yeah, has to put you in such a weird spot. Obviously yeah. it makes you feel just overwhelmed with joy, but yeah. that's a lot of like, <laughs> I don't want to call it burden, but yeah. like weight on your shoulders. Well, I know he feels it too. He, yeah. he loves the property. He loves doing it. I felt bad for him because he's been in like an awkward limbo stage for <laughs> years and they're finally doing something with they obviously should have done something with him a lot sooner yeah but i just thought how cool is that like what a (laughs) as a really any profession i guess to have that kind of support just unanimously like cheer you on that's gonna be awesome i can't wait to see more yeah i saw some funny funny memes from uh that because people are simultaneously very excited if you're a superman fan you're very excited that henry cavill is still uh, Superman, mm-hmm. but you're also probably upset if you're a Witcher fan because you left <laughs> right. the Witcher at the same time. And I <laughs> so there's a the, little bitterness. I little commented bitterness. from his uh, on his post about it. He like was like, "Sorry, everybody, I have to leave." <laughs> right. I, com- I commented on the movie boners account, and I was like, "That's because the Superman and the James Bond schedule is probably too like difficult." <laughs> Wishful thinking on my part that he's James Bond also. But I had to think of something funny, Jake. Yeah. Okay. So a while back, we did our episode of movies we think deserve yeah. sequels. Yeah. Right? 20 movies you and yeah. I talked about. And now two of them, I can't remember what the other one was because I'm still on the Man of Steel 2. Like, <laughs> yeah. But there are two movies from our list that mm-hmm. are officially greenlit for sequels now. And I was like... It's like that people have been paying attention to us because we know what we're talking about. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> I thought you were just, going like... a different direction with it because we also talked about Man from Uncle, which Henry Cavill is in. Right. That needs a sequel. That does need a sequel still. I agree yeah. with you. Um, but we're getting Man of Steel 2. And that's... Yeah. So exciting. <sighs> so exciting. And that <laughs> Did you watch all... anything else? No. Okay. Except for five of the movies out of ten we were supposed to watch we'll get into that so <laughs> movie draft checking time real quick here uh i'll make it as fast as humanly possible oh. <laughs> um that's what she said oh yeah oh shoot um, <laughs> you are pulling away in the box office you can see you've i've been very flat since end of august basically uh and you have actually been pulling away there so good for you yeah. but you're still s- ever so slightly behind oh my rating. god <laughs> it's so close but it's i do so expect close. black panther to be over six and a half and fableman's probably will be over six and a half so could definitely tighten it up or even could tighten that up i like i got excited when i saw how much money black adam is generating and what the like projected numbers for black panther are i was like yeah. awesome i'm gonna like take a, a pretty good like step up from jake in our our draft yeah and then i saw everyone's reactions to fucking avatar and i'm like god <laughs> damn it <laughs> <laughs> well the saving grace is there's only three weeks so how yeah. how fast are they gonna go out there i saw a weird thing and this kind of feeds into today's episode a little bit i guess um, but I saw a weird thing about Black Panther where people are discouraging people from going to it for the first week or two because if you're like white, they want it to be like a black celebration kind of thing. Um, so if you're white, you shouldn't go. And I was like, that's a terrible idea. That will make the movie not do well. Uh, but it's good for me because I don't have it on my draft. That so seems I'm... like such a... No, we should just be going and celebrating like film. God yeah. damn it, people. <laughs> Not to upset you. I'm just saying. Um, I did have another thing to bring up about the draft, though. Well, actually, two small things. I kind of 
I'm kicking myself for not taking DC League of Super Pets, which is at a, <laughs> currently at a 7.3 and 203 million. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but good for them. The Rock's in that too, so that helps. Um, but I don't know why I didn't realize this until just now. What should we do if we have a tie? Like if I get the best rating and you get the best box office or vice versa, if if someone doesn't get both of them, we should figure out, I guess, who wins in some fashion. Oh, shit. And I was thinking about maybe next year having three categories instead of just the two, so, and you have to win two out of three. What's your so third? We could try to figure it out. I don't know. I'm we'll trying figure, to figure it out. It okay. Out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But for I don't year, know. We only I have don't the know. Two. Whoops. Um, so yeah, I guess maybe it won't happen, but it does seem likely that it could but happen. It, That's I think, trick. honestly, we might split the difference. Like, we really could just split the yeah. difference. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. Pretty neck it's and true. neck. It's, I'm proud of us for being so close to each other and yeah. not totally blowing it. So, yeah. anyway. That's where we're at with that. Oh, that was such a happy note. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, la, let's go ahead and let's do this. talk about it. <laughs> Today's episode, I had the idea, I think this is my fault for the talking about this. Um, I had I, Because we've talked before about m movies and sometimes there's public outrage about them and people <laughs> get offended by films or or any sort of media or speech in general, anything in life people can be upset about, and they do, and that's fine. But I was like, what are the most offensive movies? Like, I was actually curious, because I, I did think we could do an episode about just general outrage, yep. but that would be kind of boring, I think, because you and I don't really get offended by stuff. <laughs> so, well, asterisks <laughs> on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> until now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so like like you said, we we're pretty. I don't know. Even I don't. That sounds yeah. weird. Uh, we just we don't get like super riled up by. Yeah. Don't take it personally, I guess. Yeah, by like controversial topics, especially in art, especially in film. We yeah. just tend to not. It rolls over our shoulders. Like we have an understanding of, oh, I can see why that pisses people off. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Or like, yeah, that's pretty shitty. Mm -hmm. I'll move on with my life because I can. Uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so I know like the idea came up and we were both stoked for it because we were like, this will be hilarious. Mm -hmm. And I think we were both like on the same level of thinking we'd be watching 10 movies that are like socially <laughs> offensive. Yeah. If you will, like so, religious because, because uh, we aren't offended by like just your average outrage thing that happens. <laughs> like and like black, language, like, like black just... mermaid, little mermaid or whatever, like who cares? <laughs> so I was like, let's actually find the most offensive movies of all time. And so we did. And so we did. it turns out, that they're pretty terrible generally. There are uh, a reason. And yeah, it, it kind of turns out because I think we even joked right before we started watching them. Yeah. Of like, will we even be offended at <laughs> all by these? <laughs> oh my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. It it was an interesting <laughs> exercise because I am definitely a free speech absolutist and when it comes to media and and movies and music and writing and ideas you should be able to do and say whatever you want you shouldn't have anybody deciding that something isn't okay because that's <laughs> generally where the problems come from if you try to say you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to talk about this you're not allowed to question this that's when actual tragedies start happening so I definitely had that tested this week when I was like, you know yes. what? It wouldn't be in the worst thing in the world if this movie got banned. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 uh, one of them, when we get to it, uh, I'm just going to tell you folks, I will not be going into any detail on it. Like I have been spending the last week trying to purge the shit out of my brain. You need to like um, bleach your brain. Dude, out. it's been it's been rough. I'm not gonna lie. Like I I am with you. Yeah. In all of that, especially when it comes to art form, because I believe art when it needs to be should be controversial. It's it should challenge mm -hmm. the viewer in any aspect. Uh 
kind of test like where are your values where are your morals are you actually as strong as you say you are yeah and what you stand up for uh i think art is perfect for all of that it should do all that and then i watched a couple of the movies this week and was like you know what should it <laughs> should it yeah uh, so, so this has been weird for i think of, both of us and you brought up uh, when we started changing the direction of the episode you brought up a really good point which is that listeners to the episode or to the podcast know we have been saying for a long time we're big advocates of yeah. let a movie be whatever it needs to be make it as long as it needs to be as much like it, whatever rating it needs to be if it needs to be r let it be r if it needs to be nc-17 let it be nc-17 mm -hmm. um but that also i think because what we're talking about is kind of got tested a little bit this this got tested a lot especially <laughs> with a couple certain ones yeah um yeah, this was rough, dude. This was, uh, I, I'm curious to hear. So we did not watch all 10 of these movies, at least. I think between the two of us, we did. I think between the two of us, we we, we may have, or at least we watched <laughs> at least eight. Out yeah, of ten. I think we watched almost all of them, if not all of them, because <gasps> we checked in and we're like, okay, where are you at? And you're like, I've seen this one and this one and this yeah, one. I was like, was... well, that's good because I've seen those ones and these other ones. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, don't watch that one. I watched. No. I was like, okay, I will not do that. So I think that we have overlap. Uh, and I think that we also covered the basis, but we'll find out. And yeah. we'll kind of talk about just offensive movies in general. Right. I will say this will probably be an offensive episode. I plan yeah. to not we, be delicate on several topics. Sadly, because like, we, we don't we want this one really to be like offensive. It's just the movies we watched. Yeah. Uh, They're not for everybody. Earned their yeah. titles as controversial and offensive. Mm -hmm. um, and some are very good. There are there some were, very good ones that are worth talking about, and there uh, were there's two value in them that I really actually ended up enjoying. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to save one of the ten that we watched okay. for kind of last. I kind of want to talk about Temptation, okay, last because that one Maybe I that. feel I have the most. I kind of told you like I think you're gonna get a like I think I'll pique your interest with what I. Yeah. my opinions on that movie are so let's save that one let's get right. the shitty let's get these shitty ones out of the way <laughs> okay like the uh, uber just, shitty ones I'll but i am move. very curious to know yeah uh how your experience was mainly because i know post child yeah you have talked about how <laughs> You went from being able to like tolerate, watch a lot of stuff without mm -hmm. any real effect on you. And then after having a child, now things yeah. kind of like hit different. You're perceiving things a little bit deeper, taking yeah. things a little more personal or emotional. So I'm really curious <laughs> to see how you or yeah. to hear what your experience with the movies you watched were. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a lot of that where I've noticed that my perspective changed after having a, my first kid and that I just, I don't know my, I guess I'm more vulnerable and emotional than I used to be. And so I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely, con yeah, I definitely connect to life more and, and movies and stories is another part of that, especially as it, it revolves around family and kids and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, I feel like I just, and more involved in the world and invested in the future and all of that stuff that comes with it. And that definitely affects the things you're able to watch. Yeah. Uh, my wife, Christy, she's like on another level of like, I, she could barely even watch horror movies. She used to like for a really long time. She started just now getting back into like, okay. Murder podcasts that she used to love. Yeah. Uh, there was a long period of time where she just couldn't even get in there at all. So I, yeah, I think that that, parenthood definitely is a big factor in the whole thing <laughs> well tell me how like what movie did you start with and and just kind of <laughs> okay um <laughs> well okay. so one of the things the reasons i brought this up is because i wanted to talk about some movies and i knew that there were some pretty fun movies that are mm -hmm. pretty offensive and also i thought that these movies would be kind of offensive for the same general reasons like this one was offensive for religious reasons and this one was offensive for race release reasons and uh, this one was offensive for like rape and stuff uh, and so i was like okay that'll give us a chance to talk about all these different topics and how they relate and how they can be done in film and it'll be very interesting and that 
generally I think did happen, but not in the way we planned. <laughs> but one of the movies that I watched recently that I was like, I love this movie. It could never be made today because it's so, it is pretty offensive as far as things go. So generally the top 10 offensive movies we went with was based on, uh, was it a screen rant top 10 list? Yeah, um, it was like a, it was like a combination because some of the most controversial lists like differ with a handful yeah. of different movies. So the idea was whatever the common ones, that would be kind of the, the mm -hmm. all encompassing list. It's like fact checking. You have to use multiple things. <laughs> you find your, yeah. Uh, and and the, the list that was compiled was <laughs> unreal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it wasn't good. <laughs> um, but so one of the movies that I ended up really liking though, we'll start off on a relatively high point. Cool, cool. Um, and one of the first ones I watched and so I was like pretty positive, like, Oh, this is actually going to go well. It's certainly not a movie for everybody, probably not a movie for most people, but I did find value in it being a movie and I thought it was interesting. Um, so I was thinking that we could talk about Henry portrait of a serial killer All right. from 1990. Yep. Uh, it stars, uh, what's his face? Michael Rooker. Michael <laughs> It stars, Rooker. what's his face? <laughs> you know Michael Rooker. Everybody knows Michael Rooker's face. Obviously from Guardians of the Galaxy yes. and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think it was his first movie. Um, but he's like really good. his first it. like starring role. Right, right. And he's really good in it. He plays this serial killer. And... He has this friend from prison that he like moves in with, and it's kind of like uh, I got like Christopher Nolan following vibes from it, where there's like this guy who is an established criminal, he's not a cr like a thief, but he's a serial killer in this case, and then they kind of like fall into working together, and he mm -hmm. kind of teaches him the ropes a little bit. His uh, friend Otis teaches him the ropes about serial killing people. And it's it's brutal, and there the opening is very interesting because in the first like five minutes you see like five different dead bodies, generally naked, generally like all bloody and stuff. Um, but it was I, I liked how it was presented because it was uncomfortable, but uncomfortable in a way that I wasn't like afraid that I would see something that I wouldn't be able to recover from. <laughs> like I felt, I didn't feel like I was in danger watching it, okay. which is good. Yeah. Um, with some of the other movies I did, I was like, I don't know where this is going to go. Someone <laughs> might actually get murdered and it's a snuff film and nobody told me and all this <laughs> stuff. So it, there are, it does get very intense towards like, I guess kind of the end where they're watching uh, ho they made like a home video of yeah. themselves killing uh, a couple and uh, kind of being rapey and stuff. Uh, is like starts to like get a little necrophilia y, and then if that's gonna be a word, necrophilia, -y. it is now. <laughs> um, and then Michael Rooker kind of stops it and like breaks yeah. it up. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. But so I, I liked it because it was uncomfortable, obviously it should be uncomfortable. Like you shouldn't yeah. be watching a serial killer movie and being like, these guys are great. I love them. <laughs> and I feel like you get that a lot from like modern ones, like Jeffrey Dahmer stuff and, and Ted Bundy stuff. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that's like, this is a little too, I guess, okay compared to what they actually were and actually did. And so this was more of like, no, this is hor horrible, but yeah as like a actual warning and understanding of no these people did horrible things yeah i thought henry was i so henry ended up being the third one that i watched and when i started it i was literally like i hit play mm -hmm. and i sat there just dreading because i was like <laughs> man those first two if this one has anything like the first two yeah I'm going to want to gouge my eyes out some more. Um, luckily, it it wasn't that way. I agree with you that it's it's an uncomfortable film to watch. And I, I do get, at least when it came out, 
Yeah. Like a lot of the controversy around it mm-hmm. and why it would be put on this list. But honestly, I thought this was probably among the tamest on yeah. this list. Yeah, um, which is also, I think, why I started with it. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it it was controversial, but I think it was also pretty well received. Siskel and Herb, mm-hmm. Sis, Siskel and Il, Elbert? Ebert. Siskel and Ebert. Ebert. Thank you. Jeez. Yeah. You're welcome. Stroke. Two beers, man, too. <laughs> Uh, Siskel and Ever actually loved it. They said yeah. it was riveting and thr- and brilliant, and, and it, they challenged the rating system that it was yeah. given because it like I guess it was made in 1986, but then didn't get released for several so years. It, it was originally X, and they the MPAA was like absolutely refusing. It doesn't matter what kind of cut you turn in, we're not dropping this rating. This is horrible. It's horrendous. It's gratuitous. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they got the rating dropped down. I think I ended up with an unrated rating. Yeah, something like that. Um, but but it, when it, I was watching it, and again, this could just be because I had already just watched a couple film or movies that were like, mm-hmm. holy shit, someone recorded this? Like, this was in someone's <laughs> head and thought yeah. this was a good idea to make? What the fuck? Yeah. I mean, so, this is one of the most, <laughs> yeah, that kind of makes sense as a movie movies. There are some that I'm like, right. You're a bad person for making and, this movie. And I, I felt kind of like I wasn't excited, but as I was watching it, I was doing some research and stuff on it and just kind of mm. and I realized like it is inspired by, not actually based on mm-hmm. uh Henry Lee Lucas, who was a real serial killer. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the more odd kind of interesting especially from the law enforcement exploiting him yeah because when he was captured arrested and in jail he just started confessing to any murder <laughs> period that they yeah. would present to him and they would give him like evidence notes like specific things that only the killer would know they would tell him this stuff so that he would be like when he confessed or made a statement he could use yeah. these things in the statements and he became kind of a law enforcement celebrity they like <laughs> treated him well he got treats he got like he was well taken care of yeah. for being in prison for murdering <laughs> at least 11 people and like leaving their bodies on the side of the highways. Yeah. And he was a horrible human being. Horrible. But it was like such a massive law enforcement fuck up that it yeah. like is still used as like describing how not to interrogate somebody <laughs> right, or the, right. the Texas Rangers they, they started closing cases that he confessed yeah. to and then didn't reopen them when and those they realized cases are that, all still technically yeah. like unsolved they wouldn't reopen um, them maybe now Henry they found the movie obviously real. doesn't go into all of that no um but it treats them like real serial killers yeah I like that they didn't base it on any of his actual killings the guy that made Henry said well you couldn't trust like 80% of what came out of his mouth. So why would we yeah. try to make a film based on his testimony? You right. can't do it and call right. it factual. So they, he just took kind of the perspective and the, uh, uh, the, the duo, because he did have a guy that he did some of these killings with. Yeah. They just took the idea of these two and kind of put it into a film presentation for audiences to understand. Like these people are real. There are people out in the world yeah, think and operate like this guy, like these two guys did. Right. Um, I thought Henry was actually really well done. I I did enjoy it. Not like you said, where you're like, "Ooh, serial killers." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's I enjoyed it movie. because yeah. I felt it really knew what it wanted to do, mm-hmm. and it did it. Yeah. And I thought that's, that was really cool. That's exactly what I thought. And what I wrote is that it's like actually has a purpose to yeah. being made like a story to tell and a, and a motive to accomplish and i think it did that well and they did it you know you brought up like there's some hints to like necrophilia there's like some hints to some rape scenes mm-hmm. what i really liked was that they never actually follow through <laughs> with that yeah but you, you don't get need the to. same like 
emotional response. Not having to watch that shit, you just yeah. immediately are triggered. And at least for me, and I'm sure for you too, where it's like, yeah. gross, gross, don't do it, don't do it. This is horrible. Any but normal we didn't have person. To see it. Yeah. And we had that feeling. I'm looking at you like <laughs> the rest of these goddamn movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we'll yeah, talk I, about it later. But rape is one of those things that is so universally understood that all you have to do is hint at it and everybody's like i get it yeah it's bad <laughs> it's terrible this guy's a, like the worst person ever you don't need to you don't get a lot more benefit by showing it in graphic you detail. Uh, yeah and we're, we're we'll get into a lot of that kind of discussion a little bit later yeah uh, but yeah i'm with you i thought henry was like this was actually a well-made movie this was an yeah. interesting story it's there to make you uncomfortable and kind of like gets you to second, I don't want to say get paranoid, but kind of just re rethink yeah. what you do. Right. Like just take a moment, take a beat as I right. say in the movie business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just pay attention to what's going on around you. Yeah. So you yeah. don't get serial killed. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't get serial killed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like oh. that phrase. It was the first feature directed by John McNaughton, who directed Wild Things. Fun fact. Fun Which movie fact. was not as well made <laughs> as Henry, but... <laughs> no. And that was the most well-known movie of his that I yeah. found, so I don't yeah. think he was terribly successful. So what uh, was the next one you watched? But... Well, yeah, I did that one. You have to pick the next oh, one. Oh, I got it. Oh, man. <laughs> See, I did not start like you. I thought, okay, so there were three movies on this list that I was like, immediately, just my gut, my into everything in me was like, this is what red flags actually look like. Right. And uh, so those three movies were a Persian film, or a Serbian film, Serbian. sorry. Yeah, a Serbian, Serbian. film, uh, that Salo, Salo, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then uh, Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, I have major like red flags are flaring all over <laughs> inside of me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to knock out one of these. Mm -hmm. I'll start off with one of the more notoriously bad ones. Mm -hmm. I'll get it out of the way. That way, maybe like it won't be so bad. Right. As I make my Try way through. Sp spread it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I almost started with a Serbian film, and it was like, man, this red flag like is just unreal. Like it was. Yeah, maybe bad. don't start with one of the top one or two. Yeah, movies. yeah, it, and it was bad. I've never had that kind of emotional gut response to a movie before, and so I actually listened. I was like, okay, we're not, we're not going to do that one. Okay. And I was like, maybe we'll do that solo. And again, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay i'm not gonna do solo it's like yeah. you know what it's like halloweeny time i'll watch the one that's legitimately listed as a horror film yeah. so i popped in cannibal holocaust and for the first like 20 minutes i'm like okay <laughs> so there's a lot of setup okay and then and then you start seeing stuff and i was like oh <laughs> oh it's like that oh <laughs> Okay, so fair <laughs> warning, I didn't watch Cannibal Holocaust because I did know that was the first movie you watched, and so I was yeah. trying to watch the other ones in case what happened happened. And also, um, I don't remember where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had texted you while yeah. watching it. It was like right. towards the end of the movie. And I was like, hey, I know Christy has a tendency to like want to sit with you and try and watch some of the movies we're watching for for the show yeah i was like maybe <laughs> not this movie yeah give maybe me a, she should sit this one out i appreciate that heads up um <laughs> but you had said you started seeing stuff and i know exactly what you mean by that even though i didn't see the movie yeah. because <laughs> there were several movies where you just start seeing stuff and you're like <laughs> i don't want to be seeing this you just it it gets gross real fast and it just never lets off the gas um i will say maybe it's just due to 
cannibal Holocaust being made in like 1980. Yeah. Uh, and we're in 2022. 42 years difference. Right. I'm, I'm trying to frame the, the gap. <laughs> That's a big uh, gap. I know. Uh, so it wasn't the initial killing scenes. I did not think were actually as grotesque. Yeah. As it's, uh, uh, oh my God, I lost the fucking word. <laughs> were they any more grotesque than a normal mainstream no. horror movie? No, I actually did not think so. I thought some of the kill scenes in like the Saw franchise were actually a little bit more unnerving. Sure. Um, the imagery, now don't get me wrong, folks. If you're <laughs> queasy in the slightest bit, not your movie. Yeah. Just not. <laughs> um, I kind of like the title though, Cannibal Holocaust. The title is badass. Cannibal Holocaust sounds like an there's, 80s. There's death really metal not band. a lot of, or at least I guess my brain just had this like <laughs> thought about the movie because you hear so much of it, especially if you are a fan of like the horror genre. Yeah. It's got a reputation. Right. And so I guess in my brain, like a little kid might do where your brain's like, this is literally two hours of people eating people. This is going to be the like horrendous. You're going to see people alive having their intestines ripped out and like swallowed yeah. down. You don't like, that's not, that's not a thing. You see people eat people. You sound yeah. disappointed by that. Uh, there, the imagery though is what's real striking. And one of them is a very famous still from the movie of a woman who's been impaled. Yeah where like the spike is coming up through her mouth. That is gross. You don't yeah. see it actually happen. Or if you do, I didn't see it. Cause I was trying to like, you covered your research. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I was researching while watching. Um, and, uh, that like the imagery is gross. The worst part of the movie were two things though. Um, the, the rape scenes. Yeah. Are horrible. And that was like the, the first rape scene in it really had my brain like oh <laughs> okay like <laughs> like we've seen brutal rape scenes in yeah. movies um this one was like <laughs> like you had to second guess the director's decision yeah and oh the 100% to even like 100% yeah and, and you and I are already people who like kind of question the necessity for that stuff in the to be shown yeah even from mainstream yeah screenwriters and directors this was on a different level of just grotesqueness and brutality and i was like what <laughs> what in your brain when you were writing this script mm -hmm. was like you know what would be great mm -hmm. no it was yeah. bad I, yeah it there are several of these movies where i feel like the person making it was a bad person for making it. <laughs> like that's all it really comes down to is like you should not want to do this or want to show this. You can tell the story if you have a good story, and yes, it involves this person and they were raped and they had to go through this in order to do this, or they're a victim or whatever. That's great. That's part of life. You should definitely tell those stories. Don't have a problem with that. But I kept thinking of like so many movies I remember being very uncomfortable or visceral or, or detailed mm -hmm. and then going back later and rewatching it and really paying attention to the edits and where the director chose to edit it. Yeah. And I'm like, this is actually a lot less, uh, it shows a lot less than I remember because so much was implied and your like imagination fills in the rest for you. Yeah. So you think it showed a lot, but it actually purposefully doesn't most of the time in good movies in these movies it was more like just go like action start raping go for about 20 minutes we'll see what happens and that was, was some of the movies we watched yeah there were a couple scenes where i was like you know you always call cut you reshoot a scene you take several takes right or you make several takes of a certain scene and i just kept thinking like uh, what would make the director be like you know what Mm -hmm. more violent you know what <laughs> let's get a close-up of that shot right there like yeah. i'm not going to go into detail of the first rape scene in cannibal holocaust if you watched it <laughs> you know if you haven't watched it 
honestly, you're not, you're not missing you're not out. Fucking I bet. missing anything. It yeah. wasn't a good movie. Honestly, it's kind of boring. Yeah, I said it. I said it. <laughs> it's kind of boring, and you get nothing out of it. But the the next worst thing that I was like, what the fuck was the animal killings in the movie mm-hmm. are real. Yeah, they are not fake. They are real. They are hard to watch. (laughs) Okay. Like, and I, I've got a pretty strong stomach. Uh, I know like people that go hunting would probably see this stuff and just kind of be like, well, you have to like, this is part of when you hunt. I mean, it depends. There's a, there's so many hunters that are like very intentionally ethical about how it goes. Right. And they are very critical. They would be very critical of people that are not. let me try and rephrase that. I think they would be able to handle the imagery that sure. you see. Though like though just the butchering yeah. and processing. Yeah. But I think I think everyone as long as it's not like tortured or suffering. Uh, one of them is okay. Two of the killings are are very difficult to watch. Uh one's like an opossum that does not die very quick and you it's a close up on it. Hmm. Uh the next one is the worst one. They kill a turtle. <sighs> Not a turtle. A turtle. That is one of the hardest things I've ever watched. I actually, I actually <laughs> looked away. I will say it right here. It got to a point where I was like, this is, there's yeah. no point in this. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep researching. So I mm-hmm. legit averted my eyes. I feel no shame. Yeah. I just felt like, don't need to see it. Right. Why did you actually kill the animals? Now, the director has since come out and been like, I regret making the movie in general, but I really regret actually killing these animals. They tried to like justify the animal killings by saying they gave the the animals to the tribes that were in the film as their food. Okay. And I was like, okay, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Not the like, same. Uh, which was something else that I realized was like, there's a lot of people that made a lot of the movies that we watched who tried to justify. Yeah. And every time, well, almost every time there was a couple that I was like, nope, I get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the most part, all their justifications to me were bullshit. And I was <laughs> like, no, you're a horrible human being. Yeah. And I actually kind of think you should be evaluated like arrested yeah and evaluated because yeah. there's something else there yeah i hate I, the Holocaust. I, thought, I didn't watch it stupid. but i i did uh I, one piece of trivia i read that i thought was pretty entertaining was that cannibal holocaust was the second highest grossing film in japan behind <laughs> et the extraterrestrial right, right. <laughs> i was like that was crazy it, japanese like, the kill scenes are really realistic, you know, uh, to the point where this director actually was arrested in the 80s and charged with murder. Mm. And he had to call the cast into court to prove mm. that they were not murdered on screen. <laughs> well, didn't he also like he had them like go into hiding? For yeah, a they while. were supposed to stay out of like the public eye for one year. So people would think that they did actually die in the movie. Yeah. 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 Uh, and it kind of came back and bit him. Just, like, overall, I don't think the movie deserves the reputation it has. Because uh, well, it's just not a good movie. And then I was like, oh, and Eli Roth, like, loves this movie. Figures. To the point where he made the shitty Green Inferno, which is a direct, like, they call, in Cannibal Holocaust, they, they call the documentary that the movie shows okay. the Green Inferno. Okay. But like Eli Roth is a big supporter of this day. movie. And will... as soon as I read that, I was like, oh no wonder I hate Eli Roth. <laughs> Fuck you. I always remember the day you saw Green Inferno and you yep. came over to my house to eat pizza or something, and you were, yeah, we so, were mad, so mad the whole time. I was so mad. <laughs> it was so dumb. Oh, okay. So Cannibal sucked. Um Let's talk about a pretty fun movie, bring the level of energy back up, balance things out, which is what I try to do while watching these. I was like, I'll watch a very serious one, and then when I know that it won't be that bad or won't be that serious. So movie 43 was on the list. Yep. It was on several lists, so we had to talk about that and watch that. 
I'll be honest, I did not get around to rewatching it. I actually did want to rewatch it, but yeah. I was also after I watched a certain movie, <laughs> I literally dude, like you know me when I yeah. Halloween time kicks in, I watch all horror except for what we <laughs> got to watch on the show. I watched yeah. this movie and was like I literally cannot watch <laughs> anything that's not edifying. Yeah. I've had to watch just like actual edifying films. <laughs> did you start watching Christmas movies earlier? Oh, hell yeah, I did. <laughs> I was going to say, I bet you Dustin was like, you know what? Christmas comes early this year. Yep. I need some That's of this. exactly what I did. Exactly what I did. <laughs> Dude, like Charlie Brown was putting that Blu-ray and it was yeah. like edification right You're now. Like, I need to go back to my childhood. <laughs> yes, I was. I feel no shame for having to do that. I yeah. mean, like... Thank God we've got the next episode that we've also been trying to prep for because that was that's joyful to me. But yes, yeah. Christmas movies came out almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> um, so movie 43, we were both kind of surprised that it was on the list. I still don't understand how that movie's on that list at all. It's not like offensive, but I guess it is kind of gross. Like it's not for, I mean, it, it's not that much more gross than a normal like 2000s 2010s teen comedy movie yeah but when you see hugh jackman with the <laughs> testicles on his chin and dipping it in soup and stuff um yeah i mean people are gonna be like oh that's gross i don't want to watch this i think it's pretty darn funny i, I really really <laughs> like this movie actually and i was like i i asked my christy i was like you, you like that movie right she's like i love that movie yeah. <laughs> i was like thank you so you could see I why I don't remember it as well as I wish I did, mm -hmm. but I saw it in the theater because I was stoked to go see it. I remember not really enjoying it, yeah, but just kind of being like, oh, it's literally just the dumbest anthology film I've yeah. ever watched that is purposely bad. Yeah. Like, it and, means to be bad. And I think part of the fun is having very well-known, very serious actors yeah. in it who are like, Oscar winners and all this stuff who then have testicles on their chin or like just have all these weird, we real super silly gags. Um, and I think that's part of the fun. It's like, it's like we've been rewatching the old Ashton Kutcher punked show. Oh, okay. And, and we realized that show is really fun because they're all famous people. And once you start doing like these pranks on, ordinary people they're a lot less funny so <laughs> yeah. i do think that's a big part of it <laughs> but i didn't realize i was thrown off when i started rewatching it because i had apparently only ever seen the international version and the international version is completely different as far as the through line story really so you may recall that dennis quaid and greg kinnear are like Dennis Quaid is like a movie writer who's pitching ideas through the yeah. whole movie. Um, I didn't see that movie at all until this oh. week. I was like, what is this movie? <laughs> maybe I got this wrong. Maybe I think of the, thinking of the wrong one. Um, yeah, they have two different cuts and that's like the American theatrical cut. And then internationally, they replace that whole through line story segment with these kids who who are American actor kids. I don't know why it's in the international cut. They just like reshot it and recut it for the other audiences. But there are these kids who are, uh, they tried, they convinced their little brother to help them find, like they play a prank on him and say, oh, there's this super a banned movie on the internet that uh, we need you to find. And they're like, no movie exists. So it'll be a funny prank. And so they tell him movie 43, we just make up a name. And so he's like trying to find it and they keep finding these like internet clips of movies okay. uh, on like the dark web and stuff. And that's kind of the, how they get all these different clips of movies in there. And I honestly prefer that story. I thought it was <laughs> much more in line with the spirit of like just these kids finding these dumb things and offensive right. segments and all, all this stuff uh, than than the other one so i'm gonna keep watching the international version <laughs> if you have a choice i recommend it i haven't seen that i saw the the one where they're pitching to the hollywood execs all these like ideas mm -hmm. uh yeah i like i genuinely did mean to re-watch it i mm -hmm. just got caught up watching 
movies for uh, our next episode. But I was like, I'm still dumbfounded. You just rewatched it. What was like it being gross being that can't be why it got put on top 10 of so many yeah. lists. Yeah. Did you see I, anything that you felt, oh, maybe that was what did it? I think that maybe not being terribly good. So it is kind of <laughs> it's, mediocre. It's just because it's so bad. Well, it's it's gross jokes. I think that people would say it's tasteless jokes. Okay. So it, they're tasteless I mean, jokes that are silly and stupid. Um and and juvenile you might say but it's it's Halle Berry and and every comedic actor that you like can think of you have Anna Faris and um what's his face who's not married to Anna Faris anymore uh but Chris Pratt Chris Pratt thank you um they have a, like a segment together where she really wants to convince him to poop on his chest and for like in a sex thing and it's really funny because they're like married in real life, but the people are funny. The concepts can be gross, um, but the concepts can be funny too. So I think it's a fine movie. I think it's certainly not for everybody, but it's not a, not the worst movie of all time or even the most offensive of all time. I just looked up like, why is this listed as like so offensive? Yeah. And literally all any of these threads are talking about is just like, the movie just sucks. The movie just like <laughs> that can't be crap. why it's considered offensive. Like, trust me, folks. I've watched a couple movies recently that mm -hmm. I am reevaluating everything <laughs> I thought about on why I hate certain movies. So yeah, well, so that's an interesting <laughs> point, and I was going to bring it up, but since you did, might as well do it now. I was thinking, are there any movies, or even could there ever be a movie that I would find? offensive like there's not anything wrong with being offended i don't i don't really think that i think that the only problem is if you really get upset at other people if they're not offended or try to force them to be offended or shut down the thing because that if, if people are not offended by something you try to shut it down because you think it's offensive I'd, i have a problem with that but that you can be offended by yourself and i don't if i was offended by something I was really curious what that would be. And then I was, so I was thinking about it. I was asking Christy about it. I was like, what, what movies are offensive? And Halloween ends came up as like, you know what? I was offended by how that movie was made, why yeah. that movie was made. I took that movie real personal. <laughs> I, so like, that and counts. I feel justified because so many people, have reacted to it the same way I did. Now yeah. we're all being made fun of on the internet. Cause what else are you going to do with the internet? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Um, I still think I'm fully going to acknowledge. I'm probably being dramatic and being so <laughs> like hateful towards that film. Mm -hmm. um, but that first, like the original Halloween, and you know this, man, like yeah. that movie has such a staple in me, like mm -hmm. personally, mm -hmm. that when I see such a disrespect to the storyline, the character, the whole idea of like Haddonfield, yeah, like when someone just shits all over it the way David Gordon Green <laughs> and company did, yeah, I take it offensive. I took it offensive and like when they made Batman and Robin and I was a kid like, <laughs> yeah. that offended me because these things mean something more than just characters or little stories to me. Yeah. Um, I had the same thought though of like, what movies would I actually consider to be like, have I been offended yeah. by a movie? Have I watched a movie and like, and I try not to, I don't consider me being mad at a movie for being <laughs> bad yeah. as being offended. I not, not including Halloween ends. Fuck that movie. <laughs> uh, but like in the grand scheme mm -hmm. of things, like have I ever watched a movie that I actually was like, this really offends me on so mm -hmm. many levels. And for the longest time it was, no, I have not watched a movie. Yeah. And then I watched a certain movie for this. And was <laughs> like, nope, there it is. Like I've always known that this was triggering and mm -hmm. I'm, 
very like it's bad and yeah. I hate this. Yeah. Seeing certain things put in film and being kind of like exploited for yeah. gain. Right. That's offensive to me. But you and I have actually also talked about uh like with racism in films. Um like generally we get it, racism is horrible. Yes. Mm-hmm. Never going to downplay that. I've never actually been like offended by a film's portrayal of it because it's usually right. the racist characters are kind of the joke. Like we're making yeah. fun of them for being ignorant. We're showing or, them for being pieces of shit. Or the villain. Yeah, you're like, or the well, villain. They're, yeah. they're the bad guy. And this is just cementing your the audience's right. perception of them as the bad guy. Right. Uh, that got challenged this week too, where I was like, oh <laughs> yeah. my God. I think <laughs> modern day audiences... Mm-hmm. who get mad at movies for being racist mm-hmm. have no fucking clue what racism <laughs> in a film actually looks like. Right. Because y'all aren't going to bother to watch a three hour silent film from <laughs> 1915. Uh, but you should, but we did teach you a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> uh, but yes, I can generally say I have been offended a couple times in the last yeah. two weeks. Yeah. And that was weird for me. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, it definitely challenged my worldview, which I kind of liked because it is kind of, it makes you worried if you're a little like, I don't know, damaged or psychotic or something. <laughs> if you're not ever offended by like, anything. if you're a little too relaxed with the things, like yeah. maybe there's something wrong. I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you. I'm like, maybe I'm too autistic or something. I don't know. No, I'm not all that chill anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Now you're more traumatized than anything. Um, traumatized. Yes. I also, I, I got a little spark of just like, I've, I've got a little angst, Jake. I'm, I'm so glad okay. we've got like the next few episodes coming up and it's like holiday season. Mm-hmm. So I've got a lot of good things. Good times. Movie wise coming. Yeah. That's going to be good for me because I'm telling you, I'm kind of mm. tired of watching just the absolute worst movies <laughs> I've ever seen. Okay, so you don't want to, do you want to talk about pedophile Nazis now? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that for transition? That was a great transition. We, we got, I mean, we still have a few movies to go through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't wrap it up yet. So, I'm of course, referencing a movie you've never heard of called Salo or Salo or the 120 Days of Sodom. Yeah. And, I didn't watch uh, this one. Okay. Well, it's from 1975 and it's about world in the height of World War II in Northern Italy. There are fascist Nazi Italian dudes, um, as there were. That definitely was true. <laughs> but the entire movie basically takes place in this one estate of these big, rich, uh, like government people. So okay. it's kind of like government elite uh, people have kidnapped like nine young boys and nine young girls and kidnapped slash convinced their caretakers to caretakers to let them go. Like this one girl was at like a convent and she they just convinced the nuns to let her go. Um, because they're Nazis, like they're fascists, they kind of run everything. Kind it's, of evil bastards. Yeah, they are able to flex their muscle and kind of do whatever they want, um, as many government elites in the world do, and they kind of do very disturbing and dark things. So, in general, I did not like this movie. It's a gross movie. It's not a good movie. Um, the director pr- protects it or defends it, saying that it's like anti-fascist. Uh, like anti-Nazi stuff, which you would think would be commendable, but he doesn't do a good job of actually like getting that point across. So I don't give him that point. I wouldn't say. So you're like me, where you saw the like defense of some of these movies, and you're like, no. Yeah, yeah. So they they the 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 government elites basically spend several months, 120 days, and then it's in the title of the movie, 120 days mentally and physically and sexually torturing these basically kids they're teenagers ish kind of um in italy it's in italian the whole movie um and the the this is one of the ones where the director 
um, is like a Marxist. In real life, he's like a confessed like Marxist and he, he's a homosexual and he's all these things. And I'm like, this isn't like helping your cause, bro. Like this is, this is, if you are concerned about people treating you badly, maybe don't have these gross old men raping these young boys. That's not right. how you get people on board with being a gay director and like making movies. That's one thing. But I, I, I wanted to find something valuable in it because it is a thing in the world that mm -hmm there are people who are so powerful that they will do and can do whatever they want. And they certainly abuse people and cultures and they're, yeah. they're tyrants essentially. And so I, I, anybody who's like went down the rabbit trail in 2016 and during like the spear cooking stuff and all of that, like people will abuse, especially even in like Europe and like older governments and older cultures, like, to the royal family and all that stuff people are wild and so i was like this could be a good thing that people actually have their eyes open to oh these people are abusing their power in these ways but no one's going to see this movie because it's told in a way that nobody is going to want to see right and i think that's one of the key things that i was thinking of like i like i said i'm a free speech absolutist you can do and say whatever you want and you should be able to but the point of film and the point of talking and storytelling and all this stuff is to get your ideas across in the best way you can, right? The best way you can is generally knowing your audience and who you're talking to. Like I don't have a problem with basically any curse words, any other words. I will say anything or do anything at any given time, but I will not say Fuck when I'm talking to my grandmother or I'm trying to communicate an idea at work, I'm not going to say this fucking retard or something like that. I will right. say it to you because I know you don't <laughs> care. I know you're not offended by it. So <laughs> the idea we is... were raised in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I will say that's gay because I don't feel like gay means that I'm talking about a gay person. I'm from the 90s where the, mer the words mean other things. But yeah. the point is what you say and how you say it is important and it's it's the only way that your ideas will get across and so mm -hmm. if you want your ideas to get across you should choose the correct editing and dialogue and story and all this stuff to get those ideas across and i don't think this movie did it i don't think a lot of these movies did it there's a lot of like there were some parts in this one where i was like I'm just going to scroll through my phone a little bit here. <laughs> you did the same thing I did. Yeah. You're like, I don't never mind. has Instagram <laughs> sounded so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. seen it. Like I got to the point with a couple of them where it was literally like, it wouldn't refresh because I had already <laughs> been on it so much. Like Dustin, you've seen everything <laughs> right, on Instagram. Like, God damn it. Show me something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I wanted to like the idea of it and because like, like this movie and like another movie in our list, I do think that the topic is important. I think that so many people have kind of forgotten. They, they haven't forgotten. It's complicated. So if you talk about Nazis, everybody's like, oh, the bad guys, like everybody knows Nazis aren't good. Their ideas aren't good. Things that they do for society is bad. Everybody gets that. But ask somebody, how did the Nazis come to power and how was Hitler elected and why did so few people actually complain or protest or start a revolution right. when their neighbors were being carted off and killed? Like, people will let this happen. Why? Like, what led to it? What's the if context? There, there's more to it than just one day Nazis were overrunning yeah. the place. Like, the, They're not a big long process to it all but yeah they're not an omnipotent monster that is a, just a faceless being that came out of space or something uh jordan peterson talks about it a lot and i think it's a something from philosophy and carl jung and all this stuff but it's basically that he does a lot with like nazis and auschwitz guards and philosophy and stuff of the most cruel auschwitz guards every single uh, what does he say? Every single tragedy 
that has that human that has happened to human beings that human beings have committed have been carried out by human beings and right. you are one of them like you're a human being and so you should be concerned about why did that happen how were those people able to do that and and what prevented them from knowing that was bad and all those things um those kinds of things i think that people are missing nowadays so it yeah. would be good to see a movie about that and be like oh yes nazis are bad but here's a person who's a normal person who actually believes in the stuff why how do they get there kind of thing yeah. and so that you know that you can look out for it in yourself you can look out for it in the future in culture so it doesn't repeat itself that would be a good thing <laughs> because, in society well until people start doing what you are talking about where they actually learn yeah they actually research look at history kids your history is important <laughs> yeah it's not just a boring class in school. Yeah. There are literally every answer to all of our current problems. Right. All the answers. Yeah. Are literally right in front. It is the biggest open book mm -hmm. test of all time. And we just keep being like, you know what? <laughs> we'll close that. And yeah. uh, <laughs> if I ignore this, mm -hmm. everything's okay. It's in the past. It will definitely never come up yeah, again. Except that it repeats itself like every hundred years. I'm not yeah. saying Nazis repeat themselves every hundred years, folks. Um, they uh, can and probably they, will if you're not they, paying attention. Right, right. We're currently funding but in saying, Ukraine, like, but that's a different thing. Yeah, you <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like Until we as a species actually dive deeper into why all of this continues to happen or wake up and realize all of this continues to happen and yeah. has forever. Yeah. Um, and actually do real action against it. Mm -hmm. Like actual action against it, not shaming people online or canceling everything that you think is like not socially acceptable. Yeah. Uh, you got to actually do some research folks. It's important. I agree with you. I didn't watch the movie. Uh, like I said earlier, I had one of the biggest red flags about this one. <laughs> I will say I'm going to put an asterisk okay. and say, had I known everything about a certain other movie yeah. before watching it and known more about this one, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have watched either, if yeah. I'm totally honest, but I may have watched the Nazi one <laughs> over it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Nothing you said sounds like good. It wasn't the good. idea of how ultimate power can just yeah. be so frantic and yeah. tyrannical. So. It certainly wasn't good, but it wasn't as it wasn't as graphic as I was worried it would be. And okay. that probably is a benefit from being from 1975. It was graphic <laughs> yeah. in 1975 for sure. But if I was going to watch a movie from 2010, like you did, then yeah, I would probably be very much more concerned. Yeah, which I was, but not until <laughs> a few movies down the line. All right. Uh, I don't even remember what I watched after. Oh, oh okay. Um, what did I watch next? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, when I made my notes, I watched them in no particular order. I just kind of yeah. went down the line. You can just pick um, one. So I watched. I spit on your grave. And this was funny because I was mm. telling like some coworkers about this episode, <laughs> telling them what movies we were watching. Did you get sent to HR? No. <laughs> That's good. No, actually, for the most part, a lot of people had never heard of any of the movies you and I were watching. <laughs> yeah, me neither, for the most part. Uh, but I mentioned I spit on your grave, and I had a, a few of them were like, oh, we've watched that one, or I've seen that on like mm. Netflix or whatever. And I've been like, no, no. Not, not the remake. Not the remake. Like the original <laughs> and the, one. like four sequels to the remake <laughs> right. for some reason. <laughs> it's like the original, 1978. They're like, oh. And I was like, it's... I researched this one. I have seen the remake, so I kind of had an idea of what I was going to see. Okay. Which I helped. Thought. It helped me because I was like, okay, 
Yeah. I, I know there's going to be a real bad, real long, like rape scene in this movie. Yeah. I will probably turn away. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll go make <laughs> some food. Like you can hear it. Yeah. I'll know when it's over. Yeah. But after watching some of the rape <laughs> stuff in Cannibal Holocaust, I was just like, it's just, <laughs> it's so unnecessary, folks. It's so yeah. unnecessary. I wish that I knew more about it. I did see this one as well. I wish I knew how long it would be because all I knew was the summary, which was a woman gets raped and then goes on like a revenge mission against right. all of her rapers and kills them all. I was like, well, that sounds not terrible. That sounds noble and good. So I'll watch that movie. And then she gets raped and I'm like, that wasn't so bad. That was that, that was second. I mean, it nothing. wasn't good, obviously. Right, 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 right. <laughs> it wasn't, folks. folks. <laughs> I prepared myself for much worse, is yes. what I'm saying. And then you know she's uh, she's stumbling home and all this stuff. And then I'm gonna tell you, dude. Again. That <laughs> and then she's raped again. I was like, shit. That second one. Yeah. That I was like, that may have been a scene that offended me. Yeah, because I felt like the first time, you get it. We yeah. got the point. Like right. this, if is, that was it, it would have been enough. Yeah, like it was more than enough. This yeah. was you understand a hundred percent how damage, yes. how horrible, just malicious, just evil that act was. And immediately, yep. I was like, that was worse than the remake. And this was nineteen seventy eight. <laughs> like immediately was. Oh, I get why this is on the list. Yeah. Instantly understood. <laughs> and then the second one happened. Yeah. And I was mad. Like yeah. it angered me because it was just so did the director be like, you know what's a good idea? <laughs> just when the audience isn't like upset enough. Yeah. We need to up the Annie. And that pissed me off. Yeah. That was how I well, took it. I was also, I guess kind of vulnerable because like i said my guard was down i was like she got raped that's the rape and then she's gonna go on a vigilante mission and and so i was actually like i was starting to appreciate the movie or trying to at least where i was like i kind of appreciate the after the rape happens part wasn't like glossed over like she's Mm -hmm. naked stumbling home and and there was a very much I got the gravity of like the awkwardness of like, uh, and now she's just completely been like stripped of all of her, I don't know, just pride and everything. She's like completely stripped of just, I guess what kind of made her human. Yeah. Her energy is just drained. I was in the same boat. I was like, if she starts killing these motherfuckers now. Yeah. I probably won't have the hardest time with this film. Right. And then that second rape scene happened and was like, (laughs) are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's gotta be, that's gotta be it. (laughs) That's what I thought. (laughs) Nope. And then there's a third rape scene. Dude. I was like, when the third one happened, I was like, I couldn't scroll the phone. Yeah, I was nope. I'm leaving the room. Like I'm yeah. so done. I was so close to just being like, I'm not. I don't fucking care if she kills him. I'm done watching this. Yeah, and I was like, I kind of want to see how horrible of a death scene. <laughs> yeah, that these guys. I was get. like, this better be worth because they the need payoff. to die. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm on board. Even though I was on board 20 minutes ago, <laughs> I, I'm on board now, and I want the payoff of seeing these guys. Yeah, like I need their- to see them die. That to me, I was trails to be their X trails. Yeah, I need to see something that is just like I need to see a kill scene that makes me physically like, oh no, yeah, I got it. And I was like, (laughs) okay, (laughs) yeah, but yeah, the 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 third rape scene especially was just like. I am, I am done. And I was like, if there's a fourth one, I swear to God, I'm turning this off. Like right. it has, it's been like, so the first 20 minutes, nothing it's happens. It's an hour and a half movie. And literally the first 45, 50 minutes of it. Yeah. Is rape. Well, the first 20 minutes, nothing happens. I was like, this is the most True. boring movie ever. And then, and then there's like 20, 30 minutes of rape. And I was like, 
dear God, how <laughs> much longer can this like, go? This, why? I, and I did. I was thinking, like, why? Yeah. Why? When you I mean, there was long periods script. of of walking in between those, but the rapes were very long. Yeah. Her killing the guys, I was like, let's do this. Let's. Do, I want to see all mm -hmm. four of these guys suffer. Yeah. I feel like I got to watch two suffer. I feel two of them had real quick deaths, and I was kind yeah. of bummed about that. <laughs> I was disappointed in the like payoff, I guess. I don't know. There was something about... I didn't like how the character like seduced them i didn't like that i like it seems so i, I obviously like i've never been raped and i've never killed my rapists but i imagine if i didn't want to be raped and then you raped me i would not then have any potential to even pretend or try yeah to Pretend like I am actually interested in you now and I'm going to seduce you so that I can then kill you. Like, like it's, it felt like giving away something that they are. It wasn't taken. even like a, a teasing seduction, right. right? Like she actually. She literally lures them into having sex with her. And, and then after act yeah. is done. After then, she's had sex with them again, then murders the guy. I didn't, I'm with you. I did not like that. I thought that made no sense to yeah. me. And again, maybe, I don't it know. It felt unfair to the character to me. But I felt that way too. Um, I felt so weird. Like, I liked watching the first guy get hung. I yeah. thought, yeah, let his body dangle. And then yeah. they don't. And I was kind of disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Because my brain was like, use that body as a trophy. Motherfucker dis <laughs> like. Yeah. Defiled it you. Should be a warning to all rapists. You murdered him. Yeah. Yeah. Let him hang. Uh, the second guy, though, that was the one I was like, that's a kill. Yeah. Like, seduction aside, mm -hmm. that was a kill. Uh, and that was a part when she, like, flicks the knife up out of the yeah. tub. In the and bathroom, you kind of, yeah. like, hear, you can kind of, <laughs> I think it's a guy thing. Or anything yeah. in the nut region. I felt it, yeah. You're like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, kind of puckered up a little bit. That one, I I appreciated that kill scene because I it, it's drawn out. You listen to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. They do a couple shots of him bleeding out. And I was like, it's gross. It made me cringe. But I was okay with watching that guy die and suffer just yeah. because of what he had done to this woman. Totally. Uh, the other two in the lake, I was disappointed in their kills. Yeah, the like you expect the last two to at the same time to be a climax because it's yeah. at the end of the movie. I was like, this is so boring. And she just what? drives the boat back and she's forth. Around and around. I was like, run him over. You got yeah. a goddamn motor. <laughs> Do something. Honestly. <laughs> I was very well, disappointed in the ending. I, I was disappointed too. I didn't hate the movie as much as I thought I did. I will never watch it again. Yeah. Um, I'm, I did hate that dude. That second scene was like, <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> That's like, I guess you could say I got offended at that being on screen. Yeah. Uh, I, I was mad at that. I yeah. really was. Cause I was like that first one mm -hmm. is so over the top already. And we get it. Yeah. Your point was made. Right. There is no reason mm -hmm. for you to keep doing this. And then they yeah. did it two more it, times. It felt so backwards. If I'm if you're making a revenge movie, you have to set up the motive for the revenge. They did that in the first rape. <laughs> they went above and beyond, like you said. Yeah, yeah. You 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 could have done half of that, implied more. We would have been on board for revenge. Um, and then they didn't really fulfill the whole, the rest of the movie should have been the yeah. revenge and they didn't really fulfill all on that so i felt like it was just i i want to make a rape movie and then excuse it by having a little bit of revenge on the yeah end. and reading some of the stuff even the actress i was actually really shocked uh she defends the movie and being like a very pro feminist film pro like strong yeah. independent woman i did not get that sense no. at all and yeah. before anyone says, well, you're a man, that's why. No. <laughs> At no point 
Right. Because I feel like this movie was building women up. Right. Because even when she kills, they've pretty much established she is void of all humanity at that point. Yeah. She has lost everything that would make her a like, strong, independent woman. Right. You can have strong, independent women fight back. You should. I think that's important to show, especially right. being a father of a young woman. <laughs> right. I want to see strong, independent women in film, in art, and shows, and all that. Right. Um, this, I just, I felt like, to me, this would not be an uplifting movie or story no. for women. No. I, I just, I, I did not get that point <laughs> from the movie. I just felt kind of like what you said, where it was like, I think this guy just wanted to show rape on film. Yeah. Because the kill scenes are pretty rushed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It felt all of it felt very rushed and just like, especially compared to the rape. Like I would like more murder and less rape, please. That second one, I can't wait for that image. I can't wait for the day when the imagery of these movies is like, yeah, finally purged out of my skull. Yeah, it'll be a good day. I might have to wait for Alzheimer's Alzheimer's to set <laughs> in. <laughs> Just, just on these movies, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I texted you about a movie. I don't know if you watched it. Did you watch Murder by Death? I did not. Okay. But I was curious because I looked this one up. I didn't watch it because when you texted me about it, yeah, I was down to like the last three movies to watch. Mm -hmm. I had already picked what the last three would be that I was going to watch. Okay. And I was like, Jake and I had just established he'll watch those. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch these. We'll have this list compiled together. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm already burned out on watching this <laughs> shit. Yeah. And I have three more fucking movies to watch yeah. that are apparently the worst of the worst. <laughs> so this is great. I did this yeah. so well. Yeah. So I was trying to throw in a movie that I knew would be offensive, at least by today's standards, that wasn't going to be the worst of all time and not mm -hmm. on any of those lists, and also offensive for different reasons. I felt like we had enough conversations about rape. So that conversation is covered, except for the future movie we're going to talk about. <laughs> and that, Dustin's favorite movie of the episode. And then... But there are other things in the world that are offended and pe yeah. offensive and people that are offended by those things. And so I was like, this is an interesting one to bring up. So I wanted to talk about it on the episode. So I looked so, it up. Like, nothing about it on, like, what the movie was about, the cast. Uh -huh. Even people's, like, comments. I was mm -hmm. like, well, why is mm -hmm. this one on the list? So do tell my good sir. <laughs> I don't I don't think that any well first of all no most people have not heard of the movie Murder yeah. by Death. It's from 1976. It's a very fun clue style mystery detective movie. It's a comedy. It has many comedy legends in it. Um Peter Falk, Alec Guinness, you know from Star Wars, but he was also a very funny guy. It's Peter Sellers, uh David Niven, Maggie Smith, all these people. Uh there's a ton of people in it they all play like famous literary detectives basically who get invited to an eccentric guy's house for dinner to solve a murder that hasn't been committed yet and the the main reason it's like i guess offensive or probably would be offensive if anybody from today's generation cared to watch it is uh, for a few reasons one is peter sellers who people probably know as Inspector Clouseau from The Pink Panther, a uh, very funny guy, very white guy. He plays a Chinaman. Named, oh. <laughs> and uh, so he plays a Chinese detective <laughs> who has a Japanese adopted son. And uh, so he is in full Chinese garb. Oh, no. Has a little Chinese beard and mustache. Oh, no. Like the Fu Manchu? Like, yeah, Fu Manchu oh. style. He's just talking like that in like little Confucius sayings the whole time. Oh my god! Um, it's 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 funny, but most people would be like, "That's yellow face." So, if that's a thing. 
So it's like uh, Mickey Rooney and Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah, basically. Okay. Okay. Basically. <laughs> Funnier, because <laughs> Breakfast at Tiffany's is not funny. But, no, that movie sucks. <laughs> but it is, you know, people would say that is offensive. You should right. not be that. But I thought it was a really interesting topic. So that's just one thing about it. Uh, I'll get to the others in a second. But I thought that that topic was interesting about people being offended by you not being the the exact thing that you're acting as, mm -hmm. uh, particularly because it just has come up this last couple months where Darren Aronofsky's The Whale, people yeah. have been really, well, some people, hardly anybody, but some people <laughs> on the internet have been very loud and saying, you, how dare you cast Brendan Fraser, who is not that fat in real life. And so uh, that's, uh, you know, you could have hired a real fat person, I guess, is their point. And then also, he's not gay, and but he plays a gay character. You could have oh, hired, okay. you could have hired a real fat gay person, and you instead chose Brendan Fraser, who is not fat or gay. He is a father. That's good. That's one of the character traits. Uh, but then he, people are, some people are kind of upset about that, which is kind of the same thing. Which is like, can an actor? who is being paid to act as a character, play a character that they're not in real life. Like, are you required to only take roles that are also what you are? Dude, this is hilarious. So <laughs> I think there are lines. Okay. That, or at least limits. We'll say there, there's a little bit of a limit. Okay. Um, Let's get into it. We'll use the crowned like yeah <laughs> one right? i think i know where you're going with this uh blackface is bad we know this it's not uh -huh. good except uh, yellow face is that what you called it is that <laughs> yeah i feel like that, that's probably offensive that phrase too. is bad so we're we're not we're not <laughs> it's the same as blackface <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> we're not coining that one well, we'll all right whatever it is uh <laughs> I think I think to a point because 10 typically what ends up happening uh -huh. and when I say typically I mean like every time it's literally <laughs> like a hundred percent of the time except for one that I'm thinking of I know you're thinking Tropic Thunder I know. yes <laughs> yes I am but that even still goes for my what I'm trying to say but that movie did it <sighs> That movie, I'm a that dude role is disguised always as a dude playing the another dude. Gray area. <laughs> <laughs> that's we leave Tropic Thunder in the gray zone, and okay. that's where it lives. That's where it rains. No movie's gonna ever <laughs> replicate that. So it can be okay. You're saying <laughs> only if Ben Stiller writes a like genius script <laughs> and Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. geniusly makes fun of playing a white guy doing mm -hmm. blackface. Okay. Cause that's just, like that. I think that's why Tropic Thunder gets away with it, is he's still a white guy who does yeah. this thinking it's okay and right. acceptable, but clearly it's not. So he's like making fun of the initial idea mm -hmm. or I guess ignorance to the idea of it. I think it works so well also because of how it's set up in the writing. Like you said, yes. Stiller wrote it perfectly where it's not done in a way that's I'm trying to be black because I don't think black people can act or whatever. It's because right. he is doing it because he's such a serious method actor. Right. He's trying to, they're and, making fun of like actors that will push themselves to the absolute <laughs> limit, change, yeah. transform their body through like diet and exercise to either bulk up or slim way down. Look at you, Christian Bale. <laughs> right. he's, he's like, I'm so method that I will actually have my entire body's pigment change to <laughs> right. play this role. Well, and it, Tropic Thunder, I think, also gets away with it. And I think a lot of people have missed this point, which is the whole point of Tropic Thunder. Mm -hmm. It's making fun of Hollywood and yeah. Hollywood's mentality towards yeah. absolutely everything. It's like, aren't actors the worst? Let's <laughs> just like, make fun of them the whole time. <laughs> It is making fun of all things show business. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of people have forgotten that for some stupid reason, or they've never bothered to actually watch the movie. They're just seeing a still of 
Downey Jr. and makeup yeah. and being like, how dare they watch the movie? The context <laughs> is perfect. It is. Uh, blackface besides Tropic Thunder <laughs> is typically done where the portrayal is demeaning. Yeah. Well, th there's a lot on... of history around it. Yes, it's got not... real bad history Good. and so does like white actors playing Chinese or Japanese. It's got yeah. bad history and they're always based on over-exaggerated stereotypes right? or assumptions. Uh, yeah. Especially way back well, I shouldn't say way back because like racism just kind of seems to always stick around. <laughs> as long as uh, there's people, it will probably always be right. right. As long as our species is here, yeah. this is part of it. It sucks. It's stupid. We know. Yeah. Um, but blackface and like that, I think, does come under such heavy fire because yeah. of the way it's always been taken. Like right. it's always built on a bad stereotype or assumptions or just blatant assumptions based off of racism in yeah. general. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where it stops being okay. It's because it's yeah. always done based on something that's n maybe not actually true or genuine. Yeah. Is that fair to say folks tonight? Is that I okay? That's, I think that's well said. I think that, yeah, there is a lot of, Blackface is, if you are living under a rock and you don't know the history of it, people actually believed that you couldn't hire any black actors. Right. So instead, we will hire all these white actors and paint them black because we need a black character. Uh, and yeah, that certainly is not good. Um, with, that's all the whole thing about Hollywood trying to, and the, the Oscars and all this stuff. Like, yes. can you please understand and accept black <laughs> actors? It's 2022. Um, and they take it a little far because it is 2022 and I think we've come a long way, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. It has a long history for sure. And it's, people are sensitive about it. Totally fine. Um, but there are other things besides blackface that I'm curious what you have thoughts about. Ooh, so okay. I was thinking of like, what are other things where, so my thought was, are you talking whitewashing? Uh, quote no, unquote? not really. Okay. Uh, but I want to come back to that because I want to know what you mean. <laughs> um, but I was thinking, like, I my thought is when you hire an actor to play a role, if you're hiring Brendan Fraser to play a obese gay person who's a dad, do you want him to be a obese gay dad, or do you want him to have? the most important qualities of that character, which may not be his life experience. It may be his empathy. It may be his personality. It may mm -hmm. be all these other things that you can't like just see on the surface. So in terms of the whale, now one, it hasn't released yet. I yeah. haven't seen it. Me you either. haven't seen it. I That's really me. want to see it because one, I'm a big Darren Aronofsky fan even yeah. though his movies are like the most depressing films <laughs> of all time. Yeah. Uh, not a single one makes you go, Hey, <laughs> I feel good about life. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not a single one. Uh, and I'm a big Brendan Fraser fan. You and I have been like rooting for this dude's career forever. Cause he's been vanished for so long to see him mm -hmm. get this kind of reception. Uh, is uh, awesome to watch as a fan. It makes me, excited and kind of emotional not not like weepy emotional but you get that surge of like when you are such a fan of someone you get to see them finally hit this kind of success and this kind of reception it's it's important mm -hmm. um but in terms of what you're talking about i have a feeling that the fact that and we're gonna go with the gay card uh the fact that people some people are mad that Brendan Fraser is not in fact gay in real life, but he's playing a gay dude. Yeah. Um, I kind of have a feeling that his sexuality in the film is mm -hmm. probably not what is actually important to the film. Mm -hmm. It's probably just like one of the makeups of this character. It just happens yeah. to be, he happens to be gay. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's kind of weird that people are pinpointing the whale for 
having a straight actor play a gay man, <laughs> considering throughout history of film and television, and folks, some of your favorites <laughs> have been straight, straight and played gay men. Yeah. You're talking about, like, uh, not Darman Greg, the other one, Will and Grace. Will and Grace? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Robin Williams in the Birdcage? No, oh, it's a great oh. movie. And Love that's them. an amazing movie. I was going to say the other way around also happens a lot. Um, where gay men play straight characters. Neil it's, Patrick Harris is the most straight. Seriously. Misogynistic guy ever. Uh, you would never know he was gay. Like his You've only seen yeah. How I Met Your Mother. His character of Barney, who people praise. Yeah. They love Barney. Barney's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Not exactly the kind of character that I would connect to to learn life lessons from yeah you learn really just how like easy it is for some people to use other people right. he's not that great of a character folks but he <laughs> is entertaining um he learns a lesson unless you watch the season finale then he unlearns it and the whole season is wasted and, and then the wasted. whole character arc is completely shot to hell yeah don't uh, worry. <laughs> um but yeah the, he's like he's super yep. gay in real life yeah cool He's played all straight men except for a couple roles recently, yeah. I think. Yeah. He gets murdered in Gone Girl by having sex with a woman. Yep. Yep. That's he's, all true. Yeah. And he's straight in that movie, though. Yeah. Super straight. Um, but he, There's... like, uh, oh my God. The actor in Bewitched, I think it was the first go around of Bewitched, right? Or was Not it the second time when Ferrell? they did I Dream of Jeannie? Oh, the original show. Yes. The original uh, show, the actor that played her lover okay. was gay in real life, but he was playing a straight man. Yeah. So they, the sexuality <laughs> does not mean anything. <laughs> like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also, I know this is like something that people will roll their eyes to, but, and I know you are the same way, Jake, mm -hmm. where it literally boils down to were they the right person for the job? Right. If the answer is yes. Conversation over. <laughs> the conversation's done. <laughs> yeah. All I want is you to be that per like character. <laughs> right. And I want the filmmaker to find the best person for it. And if you get don't want I don't want the filmmaker to worry about all this other like marketing stuff. Right, right. In order to try to pick someone that fits the popular model. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give another like and folks, if you're yeah. gonna be mad about Brendan Fraser not being actually fat, but playing a fat mm -hmm. character, then that means you have to be mad at The Rock for playing <laughs> a fat kid. Yeah. He ain't fat. You have to be mad at Ryan Reynolds for playing a fat kid. <laughs> he ain't fat. I freaking love that movie. You basically have to be mad at all of your favorite actors and actresses. Well, my point is you have to be mad at every movie because they're you have to be not, mad at everyone <laughs> they're not actually that person they're playing a character they're playing characters they're playing, they're playing a characters. role like you every single actress in broadway or yeah that's the stage production place um i don't go to the theater i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> but i do know that traditionally peter pan is played by a middle-aged woman and yeah. not a young boy uh Hello, if you want him to be a young boy, you should stop casting middle-aged women. Right. So, folks, before you hop on the, the social media wannabe cancel culture bandwagons, yeah. again, I said it earlier, we both said it earlier, take a beat. Yeah. Just, just think. It's yeah. And while you're taking a beat, you should definitely see Murder by Death because it's hilarious. Yes. Alec Guinness plays a blind butler. Oh, and uh yeah he is a blind butler who doesn't know the house so is constantly bumming into stuff he needs to work with this cook that they hired who is both deaf and blind so doesn't know what he's saying he doesn't know that she doesn't know what he's saying it's hilarious the cook is deaf and blind deaf and mute he mute. is blind oh, okay. Uh, okay. so he's blind she's deaf and mute and uh, ignoring everything that he's saying. And he can't tell that she doesn't understand because she like holds up cards that says, I can't hear you or whatever. <laughs> um, which awesome. is probably ableist or something, but whatever. Like, that it's just a funny sounds like a, a good joke. That sounds like a classic style joke. 
yeah, it's a very funny movie from the seventies. You should watch it. I I I probably will watch that one. <laughs> I almost okay. forgot. I'm not gonna lie. I almost forgot what sparked all of that. But <laughs> way to bring us back. I, I was like, I did bring this up for. A reason, I had a. So I should bring it back. One last note. I had a coworker actually bring this up to me, and I was like, sure. "This fits perfectly with everything you and I just talked about." Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so Black Adam is yeah. a global hit. I mean, this movie is killing it at the box office. It's a mm -hmm. giant middle finger to critics because the fans are loving it. Mm -hmm. um, Dwayne Johnson is not Egyptian. He's not. Uh, <laughs> doesn't actually have Greek. superpowers. <laughs> doesn't actually have superpowers, but he's and not why. the actual ethnicity of Black Adam. Yeah. But no one's been throwing out huge hate over yeah. that. So my coworker brought this up and I was like, oh, that's a good point. He goes, they're not mad because it's The Rock. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yes, I see what you're saying. Like, I'm on, I got it, I got yeah. it. But I thought that was interesting that I think public opinion initially can also sway yeah. people's double-sided. Uh, it's true. For double standards, I mean. And I think it's totally fine to bring it up if it's not done in a good way or respectfully or true to the character yeah. or whatever, like you're upset about Michael Myers, not being Michael Myers. I would be upset if about, and I think it's because you take Halloween so personally yeah. and a lot of people take Jesus personally or, <laughs> or their African heritage personally or whatever. If you take it personally, that's totally fine. If it's not done in a way that you feel is respectful, that's totally fine. I imagine black Adam is done pretty darn respectfully or at least entertaining and people don't have a problem with it. And people aren't having an issue with it. It's entertaining. It's a comic book movie it, and it's straight up. It feels like a comic book movie, but that's yeah. another story. Okay. <sighs> so we have a couple, three, four movies left. We got a few more. All right. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Dude, Here this we one's go. Tough. Like I've, I've actually, like, I've had a hard time sleeping. This movie yeah. actually affected me so much worse. And if that was the point, I guess he did it. But having done my research, that was not his point. Okay. Fuck this guy. I don't even know who he is. Um, so I watched a Serbian film or a Serbian yeah. movie, whatever the fuck. A Serbian film from 2010. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not going into detail. <laughs> Basically... You can bring up the synopsis on IMDb. Yeah. The synopsis is that a porn star tries to get out of porn. He agrees to be in an art film, which he discovers is actually a pedophilia and necrophilia themed snuff film. Yes. I didn't watch it. I'm asking you if that's. No, it. it's like that's. I'm answering you. Yes. That's okay. what the movie is Good. about in graphic detail. Okay. I don't like the sound of that because yeah. there is nothing that's pretty worse. Much rare. There is nothing worse in the world than pedophilia. Uh, there were parts of this movie, Jake, where I was like, "Is this actually legal?" <laughs> like I was not joking. Yeah, I actually thought like I might have someone knock on my door. <laughs> it's just, like, not only is it illegal for them to make it, it's illegal for you to own it <laughs> and to have it. Like, yeah, just possession of it. I was, this movie was so devastating and not in a way that art should be. Yeah, sure. There's a good kind of devastating. This was, there's, I have nothing to say really about it. Don't watch it. Well, it's censored and banned in at least 46 countries. Yes. If that tells you anything. It never should have been made. The guy that wrote and directed this claims that it was made as a metaphor for the relationship between the Serbian government and the people. Okay. At no point <laughs> does that metaphor ever like. <laughs> Sounds like it doesn't know how metaphors itself. work. Right. Like metaphors are there for people to like. Oh, yeah. This was literally almost two hours of like. <laughs> what yeah like how are you making this this yeah. was a movie where instagram stopped updating for me <laughs> like 
I I know I missed parts of it because I just got up and was like doing my own thing. The yeah. only reason I finished it, two reasons I finished it. Uh, one, the ending just kind of popped up and I was like, oh, OK, I guess that's <laughs> the end. Uh, and two, I was like. I, I guess I was being spiteful or rebellious against myself mm-hmm. because of the immense red flag that I had about this movie. I felt, you know, <laughs> it was spiteful <laughs> and it ended up falling into that little, that little, uh, curiosity folder of mine, I guess, where whenever yeah. something has a reputation to it, my initial reaction is, okay, let's like right. bring it. Let's see what yeah. you got. How bad can it really be? Right. Uh, this was bad. Um, yeah, I fucking hated this movie so much. Like when it ended, like I shut that down. I watched like four hours of Smallville. I couldn't yeah. sleep. I was like, I and I I don't want to talk about it to people because I don't want to tell people what they show on camera. Yeah, for sure. Right? Like yeah. I just I don't want to put that on other people. Uh um, right. So I've just kind of been s- like you don't want to spread the negativity <laughs> that it yeah. caused. So yes, I whipped out Christmas movies. I've got my Christmas gnomes next to me. Like <laughs> I have been trying so hard just to like and I told mm-hmm. you in the text, like mm-hmm. don't fucking watch it. Yeah. And now I need to find something edifying. Like I have to be edified again. Yeah. And that's been my mission since watching the Serbian film. Fuck that movie. It's it the sounds worst like, thing I've ever seen. It sounds like so I started going a little down the rabbit hole because I was a little <laughs> curious about I bet, I bet. why why there's a lot of rabbit hole for this one too. <laughs> How could there be a movie that Dustin is like actually offended by yeah. and grossed out by because you do see all of the horror movies and you're like, oh, it wasn't as bad as everybody says because even though they said it's the most disgusting horror movie right. of all time, you'll throw up in the theater in your lap. Uh, you're like, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, I eat my popcorn just fine. <laughs> yeah. And so I was a little curious and then I did some reading and some light watching and I was like, I wish I had not because it is... No, this awful. was like this was this was different for me. Yeah, this was really different for me. It, it was nice knowing I have very staunch limit, <laughs> and yeah, finding your limits is a good thing. Yeah, so it was kind of humbling. Um, fuck that movie so much. It was so bad, I, but it, it did yeah. make me start rethinking. Like, I have to rethink. And reassess every movie I've ever hated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because yeah. I don't think any of the movies I've ever hated before are even yeah. close. <laughs> Compared to this, it makes open water look pretty darn Dude, good. Legit. <laughs> legit. I was like, I think I have to clear my entire bottom 10 list. Yeah. <laughs> because none of those <laughs> are nearly as terrible. Yeah. That's what I just watched. Yeah. That was, the worst thing you can say about that is like, it's kind of boring. <laughs> Dude. I like, I can't, I, I have nothing about, it was just the, like, this was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And I can't yeah. believe it ever got made. And then, then I'm in the rabbit hole of people. Like I want to see, like people mm-hmm. are affected deeply. Like I am. Right. <laughs> and then I saw people defending this movie. Yeah. And like laughing about stuff that's in it and being like, oh, it's fine. Maha. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think there's a lot like, of of people that want to like, it's kind of like uh, I can handle anything kind of, I don't know if it's a macho thing or what, but they're like, yeah. And so they want to feel like, oh, I can handle anything. There's a certain level where you should be affected by something. And if yes. you're not, Re- maybe you, you should examine your humanity. You need to go schedule an appointment. Therapy is good. Like that's mm-hmm. not a joke. Therapy's good. Uh, mm-hmm. Reassess some stuff. I was mad at them also for defending the movie. And then I was like, okay, don't get mad at someone for defending something like this. Yeah. I was like, I actually, yes, it angers me, but I pity them. 
because clearly their lives must be so fucked up. Yeah. And so, like, I don't want to say broken, but there must be something missing that's so important mm -hmm. that this seems okay to them. Right. I feel bad for them for having that missing thing, whatever it may be. And I hope those people yeah. find it, can clean up whatever mess they're in, their mental health, whatever, because clearly they they need help. And yeah. like I'm not joking. That movie <laughs> was oh my god. Well, there's taking it back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode. I think that it it always comes down to what is the point of this? Yeah. Why are you watching? Why are you making me watch this? And and what's the message behind it? Mm -hmm. There are obviously things like this, like rape and pedophilia and stuff, are very affecting topics. There are other very affecting topics that people have very strong reactions to as well. Um, like, I was thinking a lot about, like, South Park and mm -hmm. the Charlie Hebdo comics from a couple of, I guess, maybe a decade ago now um, in France, where they put an image of Muhammad on the comics and in unflattering positions that he was nude. I mean, it's France, so they're always kind of nude over there. But um, <laughs> but it's very uh, forbidden to like create images right. of Muhammad and stuff. And South Park's gotten in trouble for that before. But South Park's always had a a point to the things that they do. Right. They have a reputation for being childish and offensive and gross, but all most of their episodes, certainly all of their most well-known episodes have a, have a very well formulated and written and executed point, which right. is when it comes to things like censorship is you can make a movie about, Oh, censorship is, is bad. You don't, prove that by making the most disgusting and offensive thing possible and be like, oh, they censored me. Yeah, no shit they censored you, dude. <laughs> like, that's not the point. That's not how you get your point across. It's the same thing we talked about earlier. But if you... I don't know. There's a much better way to do that. There's a better way to do things. You can show... If if his point truly was, and I, I every fiber of my being says that it was not the point. He was just uh -huh. grasping at something artsy. Yeah. Uh, I, I lost my train of thought. I don't think he had an actual point. I actually think, and this was actually when I texted you too about what if we changed the point of this episode? Yeah. Um, and talk kind of more in like, when does art, which should be controversial, it should mm -hmm. be challenging, when does it cross the line and become more about the sensationalism about this stuff and kind of lose mm. its focus. Um, found it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And several of these movies, I really feel like out of the 10 between the two of us that we watched, I actually think only three. Mm -hmm. I'll include movie 43 for you. Okay. Actually you. maintained and made their point. Yeah. Right? Is that fair I, to say? Like I would say three to four, yeah. Three to four, okay. Yeah. Because the majority of the ones I watched, I felt like there was no real point made. Hmm. This literally felt like some sick asshole mm -hmm. wanted to just push the limit for the sake of pushing the limit, mm -hmm. but didn't push the limit. He just straight up fucking went over it. Like you could yeah. resort to the joke just to add a little bit of like, ha ha ha. But mm -hmm. I actually, I don't really want to cheapen it. Cause I'm pretty serious. Like this pissed me off. So yeah. bad. Right. Um, they like, they just, they didn't even care about making a genuine point. If you want to make a movie about a corrupt government in terms of the society, mm -hmm. you can do that metaphorically. You can do it really easy. You can yeah. do it really effectively. Right. And make your point. You can make a devastating point too. Like you yeah. can really shook people. Mm -hmm. This was not that. At right. no point did this guy actually make any correlation, anything in his metaphor. I think there's more meaning. 
I think you find more metaphor in those fucking art pieces where someone just splashed paint on it and was like, oh, it's about the state of the world and uh, <laughs> whatever era. Like, yeah. I think though that kind of art has more meaning and has more heart to it than this fucking pile of shit. Yeah. I've like this. I thought I was mad about the monsters and Halloween ends. Those are like, whatever. <laughs> They're petty. Yeah. This, like, I, I'm so mad that this ever saw the light of day. Yeah. I'm, excuse me. I'm mad that everyone, a part of the film, no one, and this kind of ties in with what you were bringing up earlier about just being human. I'm mad at everyone. I'm part of this film. Why did no one have that moment of like, this is wrong? Yeah, too far. Too far. I yeah. can't believe no one thought this. Right. I just like, I can't. This movie is just the worst. I hate even calling <laughs> it a movie. I hate calling it. Yeah. I fucking hated this thing so much. And it's two hours. I'm never getting back in my life. Yeah. People, the shit we do for <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think it's interesting the how it has changed our barometer yeah. and 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 those kinds of things i guess i'm not trying to give it praise at all but i think these no, no, movies no, no, no. in general other movies like these that are actually good um do can and should change the barometer to people that are upset about the silliest little things yeah there are things maybe you should actually be upset about instead that's probably <laughs> right. more productive <laughs> yeah I, I give this film no credit. Um, I just... Ugh. <laughs> moving on. Okay. Let's, moving on. Um, do you want to talk about one of the very first offensive movies and also are, one of the very first talking movies? Are you talking the... Uh, like, the very first offensive movie? The very first offensive movie. I did watch movie. it. Did you watch all three, three hours and 15 minutes of it? I did. It was... One of the very first movies ever made that actually had a story. It was one of the very first epics of, like, I guess, historical time periods and all yeah. that stuff. It, and like, it was the very first offensive movie that yeah. people were And very it, like, upset completely about. changed uh, Hollywood. It changed how filmmaking was approached. It, it had all these awesome, innovative things to it that people yeah. were like, holy crap. And it's like the most genuinely racist, <laughs> just what is happening yeah. things I've ever seen. Because I felt weird, and, and I'm glad you watched it, because it's split into two parts. Mm -hmm. The first half, I was like, okay, this <laughs> is actually kind of interesting, because yeah. it's the Civil War, but from the point of view from the Confederate side. Mm -hmm. And that's always interesting to me is having a different perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, this is okay. And it, nothing was really striking me too much. <laughs> and then all the blackface started showing up and I was like, oh, that's like, oh, this is so obvious. And I was yeah. doing research and I was like, at first I was like, okay, like try to put yourself context of the times, yeah. not justifying it. It's 1915. But just the context of the time. They literally just started making movies. Yeah. And then I've read... I've read two things. I hope you saw these same things, Jake. <laughs> okay. So the director was shocked that anyone thought the film was overtly racist. Yeah. He was shocked by it. Couldn't understand why people thought that. Didn't understand <laughs> the offensiveness. Uh, and at the same time, he also had a rule on set that the black actors could not interact with the white female actresses. <laughs> if they had like physical interaction, uh -huh. they would bring in a white guy <laughs> to do the black face and do the interactive scene. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't understand why people are saying Bro. it's racist. And then you make a rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we can a have black racist actors. rule. But you're not allowed to touch the white women. I was like, <laughs> this is, I was like, okay, let's just watch <laughs> this. I was like, this is, oh my God. I mean, of course, I'm laughing at it because we were born in the 90s and are huge yeah. Mel Brooks fans. And all I can think of, where are the white women at? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, like, watching The Birth of a Nation made me laugh a little bit. Don't 
oh. Oh. <laughs> wait before you send that tweet for the rest of the sentence because so much understand so much deeper understanding i'll say yeah hit me with some of the mel brooks jokes it yeah. hit me with satire like genuine satire when they make fun of like right. that kind of ignorance and that kind of stupidity mm -hmm. a deeper understanding of it hit and mm -hmm. uh, now i have an even bigger appreciation for especially mel brooks's comedy style yeah because it makes so much more sense, especially like <laughs> when you watch Blazing Saddles now or you watch History yeah. of the World Part One. Like it mm -hmm. makes so much more. It was hilarious to begin with. Right. Now it's like, oh, it's so real. <laughs> like, right. But that first half, I didn't think was the worst. And I, I, like, I was starting to like it. Like I was pretty <laughs> excited. Like I was like, this, okay. So. I think that most people won't ever watch it because most people don't watch three hour silent films. Right. But or even also, know that this movie exists, but people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you are a fan or if you want to know like how cinema started and all of that stuff, it is certainly interesting. I was liking it because I was very amazed at the scope of it and and the whole civil war stuff like there are civil war battles i was like this is incredible like if i was trying yeah. to put myself in the audience in a theater if i was a 30 to 40 year old person mm -hmm. who had never seen a movie before in my life because they had just invented them and i went to the theater and i saw this movie and i saw the civil war battles and the landscapes and everything there are huge beautiful landscapes i was like this would blow my mind right it was an incredible beautiful movie for most of it for, <laughs> for half of it we we have to Two like thirds. split this movie exactly like it's split the first half <laughs> you are drawn in like i said the perspective from the confederate side it's very yeah. interesting yeah it you you have like if you know history you already understand the confederacy was flawed to say the least <laughs> right. um but I but think every that, every that both goes, sides were flawed. Everyone did right. something sketchy, and, and not I people thought, I think forget that or just gloss over it. It's the same thing with when I was talking about Salo and the yeah. Nazis and stuff. People have boiled down history or distilled it to its basic parts, which was the North was good and and wanted to free slaves, and the South was bad and wanted to keep slaves. But nobody asks. Why did so many people fight and die in the South? And they didn't own slaves. Like, why would they fight for this? Like, none of it makes any sense. This, why would they call it the War of Northern Aggression? And they're still to this day, like, actually upset that they were like the Confederacy fell through. Is it because they're all racist that wish that black people didn't have freedom? Or is there more to the story right. that you're there, not? And getting? the Civil War, folks, if you if you learned history. Uh, the Civil War is very complicated. Mm -hmm. It turns out there's a lot of parts to it that, like Jake said, mm -hmm. are distilled. Right. You, you should go and learn some more. And we're not defending aspects of it, but what right. we're saying is just there. there's a larger scope to it. Mm -hmm. And for the first half, I thought it was interesting that in 1915, this guy was like trying to show mm -hmm. uh, a larger scope. Yeah. for people and during that time period 1915 civil war not that far off yeah. like 40 years <laughs> like that the years yeah they're, they're kind of <laughs> like within your lifetime there right, were people right. in the civil war <laughs> yeah. um so i thought that was interesting and i was i thought the same thing jake where i was like man if i was watching mm -hmm. this for the first time in that time period i would be just in awe at yeah. what I was watching because the scope of it is crazy for mm -hmm. that time that it has an intricate story with the whole family and stuff and the politics of it. And when they deal, yeah. when they show Lincoln's assassination, I thought like that was actually really well yeah. done. I was like, what an interesting yeah. way to like, approach I thought all this. the lead up was so interesting and following that family. And like <laughs> they had these three sons and they had to send to war and they, start dying and they're yeah. losing these sons and it felt very heartfelt and emotional maybe it's because i just had a kid but it's like yeah i <laughs> but I like get, you, you kind of get why you're upset at the like the union army for a starting like this war with you and forcing your sons to go to war and then killing them that has a really good 
quote it has a couple of really good quotes on the title cards because it's a <laughs> silent silent movie um but one is that war breeds hate yes. like it always breeds hate you have to hate the other person in order to march off and kill them and yeah. and that's not just going to breed hate against black people and the movie i think tells that story pretty well at least for most of it but also hate against the north and all of these other mm -hmm. people you just divide your country well, that way yeah, and, it, and it, I thought it does a decent job of showing just like hate, kind of all encompassing. Like, yeah. everyone just kind of hates everyone at one point. Mm -hmm. um, I thought showing the politics of it was interesting. Um, and then the second half started. And for the mm -hmm. first little bit of the second half, I was like, okay, so like I can see you starting to hint towards something. And you're like, yeah. how is this going to turn out? <laughs> um, and it turns then, out badly. It turns it's out bad. bad. And then it's like, oh my <laughs> god. Yeah, I I was with I was following the exact same path because I was like, this is actually a kind of an important film. I'm I'm thinking to myself as I'm watching it, I'm like, so far this is an important film because this is the thing that happens. Yeah, people are like there it follows i think an interesting thing that people don't know about the government is they try to force people to like desegregate and mm -hmm. and and intermarried and all this stuff first of all the government shouldn't control marriage at all you don't need a license to get married that's stupid you don't need a license to go fishing also that's stupid let's not talk about <laughs> um for, but to have the government come in and then try to force, okay, all you people who are white and you're up here, you need to be down here. And we're going to put all these black people up here and then it's going to be great. And I, you can't do that and expect all of those people to be fine with it and not upset at the other people who are getting this stuff, um, regardless of if they actually deserve it or not. They obviously were oppressed, obviously were tortured, then their, their treatment was horrible. But you have to understand from their perspective, the Confederate's perspective, how did they get to this place of actually seeing this other group of people as the enemy or as bad or as needing to be um, attacked and all of the and raped and all these things? And so that is important to think about when you live in 2022 and you see people saying, you are up here, you need to be pushed down here so we can put these other people up there. Maybe you'll be concerned that we'll end up in the same place of actually hating those people for being given advantages yeah. and being told that you have advantages when you don't and all that stuff. Yeah, I think uh, I, I was with you on that one. Like, there's some very interesting. I, I was kind of like, oh, this is what a kind of ballsy thing to do is show. Yeah, like a, a corrupted system or a, a misguided system, we'll say. Yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to politics and that time period, I think yeah. a lot of people may think that heated politics is only a current ish <laughs> thing, but yeah. the reality is, is politics have always been heated. They have mm -hmm. always been about attacking and mudslinging and yeah. uh, trying to switch perspectives based not on merit, but change a perspective based on mm -hmm. an emotional feeling yeah. or opinion. Right. Um, and it's it's bizarre to think, it's bizarre, I think, for most people to think, when they think of George Washington or Abraham Lincoln, they think of the cherry tree, and they think about how he's honest Abe, and he's always honest and all this stuff. You should be aware that there are a lot of people at the time that thought of Lincoln like you think of Trump, or other people think of Trump, or like you think of Biden. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You hate a president at some point in recent memory. And there people, are people have that, hated the president since the very first president. <laughs> there are people that feel like Abraham Lincoln was all of those things, tyrannical, yeah. all of those things. So that's important to keep in mind. Right. And and up until a certain point, I was thinking like, man, Birth of a Nation is like, this is a ballsy. <laughs> I was like, now this was the kind of like offensive, uh -huh. controversial film. I was expecting Jake and I to watch. I was like, yeah. okay, kind of a breather. Yes. I'm not watching rape again. Thank God. Yeah. And then in right the, the KKK as if they are the saviors of the day. And yeah. I'm not kidding. Like when it happened, I was like, oh, dear God. What have they done? Like I was genuinely just yeah. like, 
what? <laughs> there was a title card that came up and it said something like, and then the Ku Klux Klan was founded to save the South from the anarchy of the Negro. It, yeah, rule. it was like of the, uh, oh man, I forget the title card, but the way the title card speaks, I was it's like. It's being very generous to the KKK. And I was like, and then, yeah, it says I'm like, they were the saviors. I was like, <laughs> yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. And you're like, whoa. I'm not, I don't think that's really <laughs> like, accurate. <laughs> wait a minute. What just happened here? And and then it just, like, it builds off of that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, whole, is there another Ku Klux Klan like, somewhere? The last half of Birth of a Nation is all pro-KKK. Yeah. And I was dumbfounded. I was like, <laughs> how do you have this movie that, like, are you an evil genius? Because you, you <laughs> sucked us in mm -hmm. with an interesting, challenging historical drama. Yeah. And in right the cake. Now, I had heard <laughs> that, like, obviously, you know, they're going to show up in the film. Yeah. Uh, and I had seen, like, a quote from uh, Woodrow Wilson about, like, mm -hmm. it's a terrible thing that happened. This movie, like, he praised the movie for being historically accurate in a way, but yeah. saying like these things are horrible and they right. actually like this actually happened. And so I was, I was prepping myself, like they're going to show up and it, mm -hmm. it won't be good. Mm -hmm. And of course, when your brain thinks the clan and you think <laughs> it won't be good, we all think like all the same thing. Like they're yeah. evil, horrible people. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Birth of a Nation <laughs> literally does a whole sequence where they ride in to save the day and <laughs> like <laughs> trample over and yeah, I guess exercise this town of yeah. all the black people and they make like all the black soldiers who fought in the Civil War who are free now yeah, they are suddenly like in the first half, for the most part, they're shown as just soldiers, just wanting to fight for what they believe in. The mm -hmm. second half, they're shown as like creepers. They're yeah. like yeah. obnoxious. They're they're like so they pass this law where a black person and a white person can get married, and they're like rejoicing. They're tossing their hats in the in the like <laughs> courthouse, and they're like that's great. And then cut to basically a guy who's like by a tree, like. Ooh, um, apparently they think you marry a white woman by just snatching her up and stealing right. her away. And I was like, what is that? I was so dumbfounded. Like the whole I second think, half, I was like, what did this movie turn into? I, don't I can't. Think they think that. And when it finally ended, I literally sat there and was like, today's audiences. And when I say today, I don't mean just 2022. I mean, today's audience as in our generation yeah. to now. Sure. Maybe even a little bit before our generation. Mm -hmm. Y'all have no clue what a racist <laughs> movie is until you've watched The Birth of a Nation. Yeah. They are. <laughs> Every time that you feel like, oh, that role was given to a like Middle Eastern person and it's really a black character. That's not uh, fair or inclusive. Um, no, that's just casting this is a movie that actually tries to tell you that the KKK was good and say, tried to save the South from the, the Negro overthrow of their whole system yeah. and, and lifestyle. And so they eradicated them and they saved the day. And, and it, like, it says... Like those, are, they, those are title cards, folks. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> it says they saved the South. I was like, did they? Did they do that? I don't think that they did. <laughs> right, you do that thing where you're like looking around, going, "Any, anyone else? Anyone? Yeah, no, no, no. What Is it fuck? just me? <laughs> it's interesting. Apparently, in 1915, when it came out, people were also thinking that they're like, "This movie is not really good. <laughs> like, right. we we think it's racist, and it's 1950. We we still have segregated schools and drinking fountains, <laughs> right? Like, but this movie's still racist." <laughs> That speaks volumes, people. <laughs> I I was just dumbfounded. I, I like I I think I expected it to have racist moments. Yeah. But I definitely underestimated 
how blatant it yeah. was going to be. I was like, yeah. I think I was figuring, oh, made in 1915. <laughs> I expected blackface and I expected, right. well, actually, that's pretty much all I expected. I knew the clan was going to show up. Yeah. And all I had read before watching it was like, it's been uh, accused of sympathizing mm -hmm. with the with the clan. <laughs> And it's I was the like, softest language ever. Right. And I was like, okay, so Promoting. my brain immediately kind of discredited that and was like, so they probably show up. They yeah. probably like, I, I don't know how they're going to make you sympathize with the, the mm -hmm. KKK. Mm -hmm. I was like, and the racism is probably going to be just blackface for a few scenes. And I was like, that'd be the times so I would be fitting for a 1915 film. And then it was like, holy shit <laughs> this was on a whole different level and you know what made it so effective folks and this kind of blew me away mm -hmm. there's like so that the n-word is never spoken yeah. it's never put on the title card they do say like negro right which is such a weird word to me in general <laughs> so i was like i don't I don't know how we're supposed to feel about that word. Yeah. I'm like, it's very close to the N word. Right. But it's also a normal word in Spanish. It's, so it's weird. I don't, yeah. I don't so know. I don't know. But I was like, there's no uh, racist language. Yeah. Like, yeah, they, they speak about like the black community in a negative light and stuff. But like, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. the, it's not yeah. the N word. It's not like, yeah, it's not like you've seen the racism portrayed in other movies where right. they're just being mean to somebody. Yeah, this was this was a very, like, by the end of it, I was like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. I never thought I would actually watch a movie where it was so pro-anti-black. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You could say pro white would be the other way. To, right. Easier way to but say this that. But this was this was on a new level, folks. I could not believe it. I was like, oh, so this is what they actually mean when they say they made an offensive movie like this yeah. <laughs> is blatantly offensive. Yeah. And it however, was kind of however, it is technically incredible. And so it's in the Library of Congress. It's praised by people because they can't really avoid it. Right. And it. I think this is probably the most challenging movie that we've watched. Yeah. In terms of what we set out for. Right. Um, Because they do everything that art, I guess, should do. And the movie is considered to be so important. Is not mm -hmm. just in terms of like movie making but mm -hmm. like historical accuracy because it yeah. turns out it's very accurate on certain depictions <laughs> and you're like i don't understand yeah how this dude pulled this movie off and they do go out <laughs> of their way i mean i it's hard to say that he intended to be racist or that he didn't know he was being racist like See, that it's quote, all weird man that it's quote all is weird. weird because he they go out of their way in the movie and maybe it's in later cuts maybe they added the text and stuff i don't know but they go out of their way to be like at the very beginning they're like this is a plea for yeah. motion picture censorship like it's important for us to tell these stories it, they don't have any sort of bearing on how we feel about actual races or individuals. Yeah. It's just a telling of the time period. Like they go out of the way to say it's, that a few times. They do. Yeah. They do say that. I, I, do, I have no clue. Like this movie is so odd to me mm -hmm. because the scope of it, it's made incredibly well. It's it changed filmmaking. It's still mm -hmm. considered to be like part of the foundation for modern film. Yeah. They didn't really have, <laughs> good movies that told an actual story yeah they had like moving pictures of a train and that was a clip and then people <laughs> right. minds were blown by that Siskel and ebert had it on like their greatest films of all time list it's it's on the list of a thousand movies you should see before you die it's listed mm. it's protected in the library of congress <laughs> like yeah what yeah yeah i mean I, I don't I know get it 
but I also it's complicated. And that's it's a very it's complicated a, film. That's and not a bad I, thing. I don't think the film should be canceled or torn down, if you will. Sure. Um, I think it has historical significance, if anything, mm-hmm. for modern times, maybe help give people an understanding of how quick something can derail. Yeah. And when we say something, I mean the human being, us right. people, how quick we can derail and right. just be mindful of mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Interesting I think movie, that's, though. I think that's very true. I do think <laughs> I think I do this is one of the ones I would put on the list as saying I liked it. Yeah. I thought that it was good. I thought that it was it was wild at the end of it and very racist for sure. But I do think that the overall gist and significance is is staggeringly good and yeah. significant. It's a it's a very important movie. It is I take away in my current modern perspective, I take away messages that maybe other people wouldn't, other right. people might right. take away that, Hey, the Confederacy is actually good and we should support them. And the, and the Ku Klux Klan specifically is like the saviors or could be the saviors and you should join them. I don't think that's the message no. of the movie. No, 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 I don't no. think anybody watching it today will take that message away, but the argument could be made. That's why you should censor things is that somebody will think that and do something horrible. I think that the message I take away is that when you do all these things that lead up to it and you have a whole civil war and you force these people to hate their brother, essentially people that are their countrymen, they live with them, whether you're black or white or whatever, they hated those other side. They were forced to because they were in a war. When you do that, And then you also have the tyranny of forcing all of these people to change their whole system against their will. And some people see the benefits that other people are getting and not them. You force yourself into this situation where it gets out of hand. Yeah. And this movie is very much, it got way out of hand (laughs) and it's been getting out of hand for the last a hundred (laughs) years. And it's a, it's a real problem. And it's important to think, though, about these people and how they got there. And I think it right. tries to set that up in a way that I hadn't seen before, which is mostly why I like it. Yeah, it's it's no, like it, it's like reading um, All Quiet on the Western Front when you're talking about there are Germans and Belgians and French people in World War One in trenches across from each other, realizing that they're just people. And if there <laughs> yeah. wasn't a war going on then you would be totally fine with each other. It, yeah, I think uh, circumstances are definitely used to alter and exploit opinions or perceptions of stuff, uh, mm-hmm. especially war is going to be so high on the list of like emotion. You're, for, man? you're very um, susceptible to uh, suggestion. Yeah. And I, I do think Birth of a Nation, if anything, shows how fast an idea or a prejudice of any kind yeah. can blow up mm-hmm. and become something that you can't really begin to even think, how do we rein this in or put a little control on it? Yeah. War can do that. Um, really, anything can do that. I mean, in terms of that movie, War is right. the Catalyst. Um, but yeah, my takeaway, all the, the crazy racism in it (laughs) aside, my takeaway really was that of just like, okay, this kind of helped ground me a little just in terms of maybe focus on what you do and what you say and how you respond to people around you or how, yeah, if you have a thought, you know, like, a an instant, uh, not insincere, uh, kind of an unhealthy thought towards someone. Like if someone pisses you off and you have that instant, you know, prejudice against them. Yeah. Do you even understand why you (laughs) react that way? Like maybe we should be taking a step back. So if anything, and I am, Mm -hmm. I've been vocal about this before. I'm very pro. If something can challenge you to kind of reflect on Mm -hmm. what you are doing yourself and how you are keeping yourself 
in line. I, I don't yeah. want to say in line. That sounds controlling, um, but <laughs> kind of keep yourself in check. Yeah. Mindful. I'm right. okay when, especially when it comes to art and movies, uh, if that stuff can help put you in check and keep mm -hmm. you in check, kind of hold yourself accountable for stuff, then I'm for it. So yeah. birth of a nation, I've it's weird because I feel like it's wrong to even yeah like bring it up in a semi positive form, mm -hmm. but at the same time I'm like, but I think it's important. Yeah, and I wish people today had the attention span mm -hmm. to be able to sit through this, watch it, and take something away from it that's not just on the surface of oops, <laughs> not just the surface of like oh it's racism, it's bad, let's cancel and run away from it, but yeah. have kind of a like okay what led to that? What mm -hmm. am I doing currently? How does this like reflect onto me currently? Right. Um, Cause the human condition is crazy and it's the most <laughs> flawed thing ever and yeah. ever will be. And it's so easily corruptible that I think we actually do need stuff like this just to help keep ourselves. Yeah. Kind of like in a healthy check. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's very true. This episode got deep, dude. <laughs> I know. I kind of didn't expect it. I thought it might be quicker because we would just be cruising through. Ooh, that was uncomfortable. That was gross. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. gotten pretty deep. We've I gotten think. some deep. And do you have any more? Because I, I'm at my last one. I think we're on the last one, too. Yeah. I think we're on the last one. Okay. I loved, loved this movie. <laughs> by the way the first okay. little bit i was a little like this like is scorsese trying to be artsy because this feels a little clunky for the first little bit yeah not scorsese like yeah but then all of a sudden i don't know at what point it actually hit but by the end of this movie i was like oh i have thoughts <laughs> and like i actually really enjoyed this movie mm -hmm. and i do have some hot takes Okay. But I'm curious to hear yours first. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm most excited about yours. Yes. Um, Dustin teased. Yes. <laughs> so our last movie and the one we moved to the top, Dustin hinted at, is The Last Temptation of Christ from 1988, uh, directed by Martin Scorsese. And it's obviously offensive because people were very upset that it was a movie about Jesus Christ that was very different than the story they know about Jesus Christ. And so uh, even though the very beginning of the movie says this is not based on the gospel, <laughs> this is based on the ideas of, and not just in Christianity, but in religion in general, of this holy deity who comes to earth and is a human and needs to live a human life. Yeah, it's like uh, the movie... How do they put it? Uh, so they say like it's supposed to be a representation of kind of an internal battle between like human and mm -hmm. spirituality, like those two clashing heads yeah. and <clears throat> what that would look like in the most famous of the people mm -hmm. that both going on at the same time. If you follow <laughs> that belief system. Well, I like that. I I think this movie is about way more than Jesus and his story. Mm -hmm. I think that it is <laughs> very it is very conveniently using a very well known and common story that even if you're not a Christian, you know the general story of Jesus. You know the general story of the crucifixion and the purpose of it and how it's supposed to go and all that stuff. So you have all that baked in context that you get for free that you don't have to tell people from scratch. You can right. you can tackle very big ideas, and this movie does do that, tackle very big ideas and not have to set up everything from scratch. You can build off of some things that they already have, introduce differences and new things, which very much serve the, serve the story um, and are, are very, very interesting. I liked it. I feel like Christians shouldn't hate this movie if you are fine with the movie not always following the story that you like are familiar with. 
I think that all of the purposes and and messages of Jesus and the crucifixion and all that stuff are still there. I think, in fact, they are told in an even better way because that whole thing about God came to earth and he was uh, a man for 30 some years and then he had to go through this whole ordeal and die for your sins. Um, that whole thing is kind of glossed over. Like mm -hmm. it's very, it's told and remembered in a very safe and cookie cutter way until Mel Gibson did the passion of the Christ. Then it was more like, Oh, this actually is super brutal and terrible. Um, but I think that this movie is kind of that same sort of thing where it's like, no, if he was a person, if he was actually a person and a human being, yeah, then he it would be impossible, nearly impossible to impossible for him to be perfect, for him to not be tempted, for him to not be struggle with these things, for him to not be upset with God and all this stuff. And so the, the things that Jesus goes through in this movie – from being a, he was a carpenter, obviously. So he just, he was trying to battle against God, trying to duck from his destiny and all that stuff. So he decided to make crosses and crucify people, basically help them crucify people. And so that whole thing, I was like, this is, it tracks, it makes sense. It's like, it's deep. And then I, I want to save a lot of it for after what I hear what you used to say, mm -hmm. but I, I, I generally really, really liked where it went and how it went there. I think that it kept all of the same principles. It's kind of like you can tell this story. It's just a movie. Like you can tell this story and, t and say, what would happen if Jesus wasn't perfect and right. he, and he did fail when he was tempted and what would happen if, Instead, he he didn't get crucified and lived a full life and had kids and all this stuff. Um, you can do that, learn some things from that, and be like, oh. And it would still, even if you believe in Jesus, you can still appreciate on another level, oh, wow, it's even more incredible that he was able to do these things because I think of it in another way. It doesn't, I feel like it doesn't take away anything. Mm -hmm. And so it's, a little silly for Christians to be upset about this movie. It actually makes it better if you want it to. If, and I guess if your faith is that challenged by something that you need it to be the safe thing that you're familiar with, then maybe it's not that strong of a faith kind of thing is my point. Jake, there are times where your wife is correct and you and I being like <laughs> the same person. Nice. Um, is this like the uh, a perfect? No, there's some parts in it that I thought were like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I wouldn't I, put it in the Scorsese's top ten movies, but it's still good. I might. Really? I might not not okay. high high, but yeah, yeah. like it'd be pretty close. I think. Um, this movie, first off, this movie out of all the films we watched was the only one that right out of the gate, like there is no prep work. There's no like, okay, we're building towards something controversial. It literally opens with him making a cross and Judas beating the crap out of him for doing it. Yeah. And then helping crucify a guy. That is literally <laughs> the first like five minutes of the movie. And then he yeah. goes and watches Mary Magdalene have sex. Yeah. Like a this bunch. is all the <laughs> opening like couple scenes. Yeah. I I won't lie. I kind of <laughs> giggled and laughed because I was like, oh shit. Like they came out swinging. They yeah. knew exactly what they were doing. And although I laughed, I was kind of like worried that it was going to get caught up in just maintaining the contract right. the whole time. It, it certainly could be that you're just trying to ruffle feathers and upset yeah. people and be offensive. Right. And at it's first I thought that was, I was scared that was the direction it was going to maybe not intentionally go. Yeah. But get caught up in. Yeah. Um, that's not how I took this film. No. The more the movie moved on, and by the time it ended, 
I kind of, I, I had a moment where I had to just sit there and like you, mm-hmm. I was like, I actually, like, I understand controversy to it clearly, mm-hmm. obviously, mm-hmm. but this might be the most pro faith movie yeah. I have ever seen. This might be the most pro come to God, mm-hmm. find Jesus movie I have ever seen. And this is coming from someone who does not <laughs> follow this stuff. I do yeah. not believe in this stuff, but this movie, I was like, this movie <laughs> is the perfect way to challenge yeah. absolutely every viewer. And right. I'm with you a thousand percent. If your faith is shook yeah by this film then i actually think you have some soul searching to do mm-hmm. and you need to find a little more like understanding of your faith right. uh, my perspective on this film is very much this is such a a great metaphor for people and faith in general mm-hmm to me, I kind of chalk this up to like very similar to Joker. Bear with mm. me. Okay. <laughs> I didn't expect this, but go ahead. Where Joker, like the whole point of Joker was it, it's showing mental health and kind of how dangerous it can become and how quickly and lost it can become if it's not worked on, if it's not like brought up, if it's mm-hmm. just kind of taken for granted. Uh, this is that kind of mentality for me, but with faith. Yeah. Where if you are not working on your faith, if you are not challenging your own faith, I think it actually becomes kind of weak. And 100%. I think, and I think Jesus's struggle, his turmoil through the whole film, mm-hmm. is such a great representation of people just trying to challenge mm-hmm. their faith, trying to find like strength in it. They're trying to build it. They're trying to understand it. Yeah, I was like, dude, this movie, like, mm-hmm. I get the controversy, but at the same time, I don't understand yeah. why so many people are so upset at it. If I was a Christian, mm-hmm. I feel like I would be telling everyone, yeah, just go watch Last Temptation of Christ and you'll get it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it, it, it shows it in such a different way that I think that it people who don't get the normal basic story it will appeal to them for sure. That makes a lot of sense. It's also not done in a way that's like trying to make fun of something. Right. Like, it's not Scor- satirical at all. No. And Scorsese was raised Roman Catholic. Mm-hmm. I think he's probably still Christian. He's praised like Christian faith as like an important part of life in general. So he's not doing it in like a blasphemous way. If that's what you're worried about as like, Oh, you're showing Jesus as a flawed person and not as the perfect deity. Uh, well, it doesn't. You can do that and not be blasphemous. Yeah. And so, I, yeah, I totally agree with you. I totally, uh, hundred percent, get where you're going with that. I really like. I don't want. I kind of don't want to spoil it. <laughs> So if you are at all interested in this movie, you should go watch it and stop listening to us. But I really do want to talk about the whole movie, so I'm going to spoil it anyway. So spoilers for Last Temptation of Christ, folks. Yeah. If you haven't seen a movie from 1988, you should go see it. Uh, I hadn't until this week, so I totally understand if you haven't. Me too. It is a great movie and worth seeing, regardless of how you feel about the topic. Um, I, I took completely non-religious themes out of it as well Mm -hmm. especially towards the ending i was very struck by how important it is for a person to to not miss out on their destiny essentially so the story in the movie is that jesus is uh he's trying to resist being the messiah he is uh, eventually does give into it for a time he has judas he has all of his followers they try to help him uh, accomplish the goal that he feels god has given him which is to die and save the whole world and then 
he gets tempted out of it by he believes his guardian angel mm -hmm. and he's like you don't have to die it's not a big deal uh, you can live your life you can get married you can have kids and it'll be great and jesus is like that sounds awesome i would rather not die thank you very much <laughs> and so he does and then he learns at towards the end of his life that that was actually satan tempting him that yeah. guardian angel was the devil he won by tempting jesus away from it and uh and so jesus failed but I took away primarily that there are so many things in our life and in the world. There's social media. There's every comfort you can imagine. It is going to tempt you to not be who you're supposed to be, to not achieve your destiny. And you have no idea what it's going to feel like until you're old and yeah. you're on your deathbed and you, and you see what you could have been. You see what you could have achieved and if you had just worked a little bit harder not given up on something and so to to there's no words to describe that level of regret that jesus right. feels to know that he fucked up so bad <laughs> and uh, not just for himself but he failed the whole world basically <laughs> like absolutely every soul on earth and yeah. god himself like jesus yeah. just the movie could have been called the biggest letdown in history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I loved that part alone. That's yeah. a great way to do a metaphor that people can take away meanings from your movie that you don't, you don't expressly say, but you also, you're not just pulling out of your ass. Like some of these other directors yeah. saying like, it's about censorship. No, it's not. <laughs> um, so that was one thing. The other thing is seeing what, I like just the idea of like, what happened if Jesus didn't die? It's like why I like Inglorious Bastards. What happened if we actually killed Hitler like the first <laughs> right. year? Um, that would be amazing. So what happened if Jesus didn't die on the cross and he lived to be an old age and he met Paul? Is Paul still around? Pa uh, Paul is this guy who encountered a miracle and changed from Saul to Paul. Uh, is he still around? And so they meet. He's like an older man. And Paul is preaching about Jesus and how he died and rose again. And Jesus is like, uh, hello, I'm right here. I definitely did not do I didn't that. die, dude. I loved that conversation between them about how I'm going to tell people anyway that yeah. you died and rose again because what actually happened doesn't really matter to people. What matters is the story that people have have created, like the church has created a story and that's what they will tell people and that's what people will believe because it, it it feels nice to believe that oftentimes mm -hmm. i took that as a big message about religion i also took that about a big message about history and we kind of talked about it before where you would like to believe that the north were the good guys and this and this confederacy were the bad guys but just because that's what the history books tell you doesn't mean that's everything that happened or right. why every single individual was motivated to do those things for their own personal reasons. There's a lot more complexity and, and stuff <laughs> yeah. going on. And so, but that does happen. People, governments, the winning side of the war will write the history books. And so it, it's just, it doesn't, it, it matters what actually happened to Jesus, but at some level it doesn't matter what actually happened to Jesus. And so that's interesting to see in a movie about people worried about what's not act, what didn't actually happen to Jesus, or there's like a weird conflict there. Oh like, yeah, oh yeah. I believe this historical account of Jesus. I'm watching a movie that differs from that, but the movie that I'm watching is talking about how the historical account is different from reality. <laughs> so there's it's it. I just love how complex and different it is. Oh yeah, I. I loved the conversation, like you said, between Paul and Jesus. I thought uh, there's a few conversations that he ends up having, Jesus has with a, a couple people where they straight up challenge him. Yeah. To Judas like especially. Get together. Judas especially, which I thought was such an interesting yeah. decision. Oh, 100%. Um, but I really like it got to a point where every time one of the characters would challenge jesus mm -hmm. to get his shit together because that's what they do a few mm -hmm. times through the course of the movie again i to me 
I perceive this film to be such a like, we're going to take this well-known person, character, mm-hmm. however you want to say it, but we're going to put literally every person into him. Mm-hmm. Like people say we're, you know, what made in the, the eye of God or whatever. Yeah. Image. His image. Yeah. Uh, this movie to me is like the only one that's ever done it. We're literally, they're talking to you, the human <laughs> being, get your shit together. You yeah. need to be challenged. You need to, you have to accept your, your destiny or work for your destiny. Like you were bringing up, you know, mm-hmm. if you abandon this, the surface might seem okay, but the realization of what you left behind yeah. could be devastating. It could right. destroy absolutely everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I felt all those conversations and though the last one with Paul, he does challenge him a lot on faith in general on getting the shit together on. I don't care if that's what happened. This is what we're going to talk about. Yeah. I took that as, that's the kind of person I think we all kind of need in our mm-hmm. lives is someone to be like, no, <laughs> you need to like understand something. I think yeah. that's healthy. Mm-hmm. It's uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but I think it's healthy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like it, this movie probably won't change my life, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I took some very deep things from this film and I just, I can't help but laugh every time I start thinking about it. Because I've been, like, replaying it in my mind. Yeah. And I'm like, I feel like f- people of faith especially mm-hmm. really need to sit down and they really need to focus on this film. They really need to watch this movie. Um, Maybe not all of it. I think everyone in general should. Yeah. But I think those that feel attacked by it or feel so offended by it, I think there needs to be an understanding why. Yeah. And I kind of like, I, I thought a lot about, I thought a lot about the band Slayer when I was watching this movie too. <laughs> okay. Uh, Slayer is very known for anti-Christian, anti-religious imagery, lyrics, music, all that. Right. Mm-hmm. But their vocalist is a practicing Catholic and he, I remember interviews with him where they're like, how can you sing this? Yeah. But you're a practicing Catholic. And his response was always, I'm pretty strong in my faith. Mm-hmm. This doesn't cha- Like if people are being that shook, yeah, then their faith is not as strong as they think it is. And they should probably be like looking into that. I thought of that throughout the course of this film yeah and i strongly believe that like have your faith Mm -hmm. maybe do some deep dives into your understanding of your faith right for your own good for your own good otherwise it's not really yours yeah it's just something that was handed you or you put on because it was pre-made for you right if you actually examine who you are what you believe why you believe it that's yours and yours alone. That's and that, yeah. Know. And that is, there's, there's strength in that. Yeah. And I think that strength is actually fuel mm-hmm. for faith. Come on, folks. Like, that's the guy that doesn't <laughs> believe in faith. Like, yeah. I'm encouraging you to go find faith. And I don't even do yeah. it. But yeah. No, I took a lot from this film. Uh, like you, I took a lot of the stuff for the human side of it, um, working harder towards something you know. Mm -hmm. you need to do Mm -hmm. but how easily we get caught up and distracted by whether it's big distractions or little things Mm -hmm. and how fast all that adds up before we realize like we've lost total sight yeah Um, yeah yeah that that really came through in the whole judas arc for me yeah like you hear him like when he talks to judas you're like everybody knows you're like oh shit that's judas like he's he's the bad guy he's gonna betray he's him the guy. yeah everybody knows but through the course of the movie he's he's like his closest confidant and friend who he he's like i 
I might not go through with this. I don't know if I have the strength. I need you to make, Jesus is telling Judas this. He's yeah. like, I need you to make sure that I actually do it. If I can't do it, I need you to kill me. Like I need this to happen because I like, promise God or whatever. Right. I, I need this to happen and I need like help. I need support. Yeah. I need a friend. Um, and he is that for him. And, but then Judas is the most betrayed by Christ, which is a amazing flip instead of right. Judas, but instead of Judas betraying Christ, Christ betrays Judas by not following through on what he said he would do. And so on his deathbed, Judas comes to him and he's like, I can't believe it. I lost all respect for you. I lost all faith in you. You were supposed to do this. You said you do this. You let us all down. And everybody's like, hey, that's your master. You should respect him. He's like, him? I don't respect him. He didn't do yeah. what he said he would do. And so just that, even if you take the whole deity out of it, and you're like, these guys are friends who've known each other forever, and he let his friend down. And that is, it, it was just presented in such an incredible way yeah. that I'd never even thought of before. I thought that was really interesting. I, I took that as kind of a, a scene of like broken trust and how yeah, definitely. damaging broken trust is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I took a lot from this movie. Dude. It blew me away. I was like, now this, why didn't we have like, <laughs> 10 movies like this? See, that like, would have been nice. That, that would have been, been real amazing. Nice. And no, yeah, I, there was no rape in it. No, no <laughs> rape. There is like, well, weird sex scenes. I wouldn't say that Mary Magdalene is having the best time. As she, <laughs> she, it is her job. She's a prostitute. Yeah. But I would prefer that it be a little more consensual than that. <laughs> right. Like, and, and the movie definitely had a couple moments that I was like, all right, we can move on from this. I, and I actually, it really was when he goes to visit her in her brothel. Yeah. That whole part, I was like, can we just like, <laughs> yeah, you were probably a little bit gun shy. I, I like, was, yeah, where is this gonna 100%, go? 100%. <laughs> um, the I, I like the intention, I just think the execution, you know, actually, I can't even blame the execution, I, I have to blame Twilight. Bear with me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You brought up Slayer about Jesus. You brought up Twilight. Dude, I told you I had a lot to say. Yeah, all right. I blame Twilight for this with the stupid wolves having the telepathy, right? Yeah. So when they do the okay. whole temptation in the desert, I like the idea yeah. of the temptations presenting themselves as like the different animals, or mm -hmm. the different things. You know, you got mm -hmm. the fire, the lion, and the snake, right? Yeah. There was only those three. Best things um, I remember, yeah. I liked that idea, but the voiceover for it was so <laughs> weird to me. And yeah. I do blame Twilight because Twilight did it so stupidly yeah. that it's like ruined that whole kind of <laughs> idea for me. So to see it in a movie that came out in 88, yeah, but to have it affected by a newer film, more recent <laughs> film. Like I was bummed. Yeah. Uh, but the voiceover, I was like, all right, like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like a, like a lion King or an Aslan lion. Which is the wardrobe right. talking lion. It was just like, here's a lion. And then omniscient and, voices. And, and then you can hear Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I thought the lion was really interesting to use as a piece of imagery as a temptation, considering Jesus is always nicknamed the Lion of Judah. Right. And to see the lion be a temptation, I was like, oh, this is what it, to me, I took that as like, what a great way where the things we we know or love or find strength in yeah. can be used against us. Right, because your guard is down with that. Yeah. Like everybody expects a snake to not be good. Like you expect it to be a little tricky and trying to trick you into stuff. Uh, but a lion, you're like, that's a noble creature. Of course, I will. Ability, I will strength, ex honor. Yeah, I will be yeah. fine with that. Yeah, I thought that was, I like the idea. I just, the voiceover work got me. It's like, yeah. <laughs> but All right, yeah. you brought it back around. I did. See? See, I got you. I do. <laughs> out of all these movies that we watched, yeah, I honestly would say Last Temptation would probably be the only one that I would actually recommend to wide mm. audiences. Um, it's probably the only one I intend to watch again. 
Yes. <laughs> Except movie 43. I will watch that right. to the end of time. You'll have to send me the, the international <laughs> version that you have. Oh, I will. I'm curious to watch that. And I, I do genuinely want to rewatch it because <laughs> I can't for the life of me figure out why that movie is yeah. considered so offensive. <laughs> if it's bad humor, like, okay. Right. It's dirty humor. Right. But that was it, right? Yeah, I think you survived. We got through it. People, you survived, and it turned out to be like a deep, deep episode. Yeah, I didn't um, expect that, but I'm very happy with that. Yeah, I told that, you we'd salvage it. It yes. felt totally worth it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, any other things you want to talk about as far as offensiveness that we didn't cover? Uh, I think. <laughs> I think people need to kind of hone in on what actually defines as genuinely or actually offensive. Yeah. Um, I think, I think what we watched as horrible as the majority of it was still plays a part in kind of honing that in. Yeah. I do have an understanding of where my limit is now, which mm -hmm. is nice. You and I both said it earlier of like <laughs> we were pretty complacent with a lot of stuff and yeah. now we're not. <laughs> yeah. I didn't I didn't think <laughs> I had a limit, but I didn't know how bad things could get. And so I have a right. new respect for how bad things in film can be and how bad the world is. And and how bad the world can be. I live um, a very gentle, pleasant life I, generally. I think if there was any real positive thing to take from this prep work. Uh, it's really, <laughs> I think everyone needs to just kind of sit down with themselves and have a heart to heart and be mm -hmm. like, okay, <laughs> time to self check right now. <laughs> I think, I think everyone kind of needs that. I've been doing it. I liked how you told me when I told you I needed something edifying. You're like, great word use. That's literally the only word that keeps like flashing in my head. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, uh, I, the most death I've watched since watching these movies was like one of the movies for our next episode. Okay. Um, but it wasn't even like a gruesome, but I have found myself kind of adverse mm -hmm. to brutality right now. And yeah. I'm like, this is weird to have such an effect on me where I'm like, I'm feeling a little like sensitive to certain imagery now. And it's probably going to be a while for me to watch some of the movies that I actually really love. Yeah. I probably won't watch them for quite some time now, just because I'm still like, I really hated some of these movies, man. I really <laughs> hated them. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's a really good point about trying to re-examine yourself and, yeah. and learn where you're at and where where you need to be, I guess, what, what your limits are. I th think that being offended easily or being offended early on definitely can block you from, from learning those things yeah. about, like, I, if I was super offended, I wouldn't have gotten to the offensive parts of Birth of a Nation or I wouldn't have gotten through the beginning of Last Temptation of Christ. But because I did, I feel like I... My, my way of thinking has improved. I've learned some things. I've been challenged on some things and I think I'm a better person coming out of it. Yeah. I, I have always, one of the reasons that I have felt like I couldn't really be offended by something is because I actively, I actively try to not be like I, yeah. I, I am of the mindset. It's my personal opinion, but I am of the mindset that if you are, offended by something easily then that person is able to control you because they're mm -hmm. able to to force you to have a feeling or an emotion or a response to something that maybe you you can't control or you can't and so if you just burst out at oh i'm offended because you said the wrong word or that person is the wrong color or whatever um then you have now just lost, I guess, your con the control of yourself in the situation. They controlled you by forcing you to be offended. Yeah. And marketing does that all the time. That's why they, they want you to be offended so that you type things and then they get more hits and more that, people hey, see Hey, you're part movies. of the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, it's a whole fan baiting thing that happens yeah. where they're actively trying to upset fans so that it gets more media. So yeah, I, I think just take a beat, like you said, and and see where it goes. And then also try to understand where where this is really coming from. You may get into it and be like, yeah, Birth of a Nation is sincerely racist and sincerely believes that the Ku Klux Klan are the heroes <laughs> of the South. <laughs> And when you get there, you're like, okay, I know what to categorize this as. But you, if you don't wait and actually try to figure out where they're at, you can write off a whole bunch of people that are just sincerely nice people who are from Boston and they say retarded sometimes, or they're from the 90s and they say gay sometimes. And they're not homophobic and they're not mean people. They just <laughs> say words because words are funny. <laughs> words are funny yes they are yes they are <laughs> uh yeah this was a this was an interesting one i think my favorite quote was from you where you were like i am not having fun with this like, <laughs> you and me both brother <laughs> yeah but yeah. if you're still with us uh, <laughs> we do have something fun mm -hmm. following this this kind of heavy one with something <laughs> very lighthearted enjoyable joyful mm -hmm. edifying it will be the most enjoyable and edifying episode yet next week yeah or next yeah, episode because we are since we started this and even before we ever had the idea to do a podcast like this i think people have always wanted to know like yeah. well, what are your all-time top 10 every movie fan has to have a top 10 you have to have a top 10 so we are trying so hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah these th this episode and next episode are the hardest ones we've ever done for very different reasons for very different reasons <laughs> but um, yeah next episode is our hundredth 100th, 100th episode 100 episodes so we're doing our top 10 all-time movies each yeah. and it's a challenge for sure i think i think mine you're gonna be like really okay I, I think i think mine's gonna be a little bit of a surprise for you i can't wait for that i think that the audience is gonna be like you like all of these movies more than every other movie out there <laughs> and i'm gonna be like i know they're kind of weird they're yep. kind of dark they're kind of uh complicated but i like them a lot but you know movies speak to you on different levels and i think we've talked about that a lot on the show is like different yeah. movies speak to you differently they hit differently so i am stoked for next week's um although i feel a little silly because i feel like it, for our longtime listeners they know at least one or two that are definitely showing up on our list yeah um don't worry i got some surprises uh <laughs> actually i'm stoked for all of the episodes we got coming up so Stick with us, guys. Yeah. Uh, we got some fun things coming. I can't wait. Go buy your shit. <laughs> and, yes, uh, or buy it. our shit, but for you, you know what I mean. It becomes yours after you purchase it yes. from our merch store at movieboners.com. Yes. Go check and, it out. We got some fun shit. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got, man. That's all I got, too. This has been really good. Dude, what an episode. <laughs> All right, All right, everyone. Thank Don't you. Don't watch those movies except like Last Temptation of Christ. You can ignore the rest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's true. It's All right, true. we'll see you guys next time. See you guys. <laughs>